Welcome to your sanity safe space. Not a fucking issue. With your favorite YouTube podcast duo. You're fucking a white man. And a white female too. Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. <laughs> Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement. This, this is Beauty and the Beta. <laughs> and we will make America great again. Out here in the field, I fought for my baby. Greta, you have sparked the interest of millions, literally, of children around the globe, demanding action for climate change. What's your message to world leaders today? Kill me. I don't need to fight. This is all wrong. Kill me. To prove. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school. Help me! I don't need to be forgiven. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. People are suffering. People are dying. And if you choose to fail us, we will never forgive you. You are fake news. Great story. Compelling and rich. Very fake. Hey, if you don't like America, then you can get it. I agree with that. Skag free over here. Get your clock back and back out of here. You are a terrific team on all counts. Big ups to Rebecca for keeping that woke. All right, go, go. Five, four, three. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the best. You can't ask anyone about that. People often do. This is Beauty and the Beta. My name is Matt Christensen. I'm flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. What's up? You feeling all right? You gonna make it through? No, I feel like hot garbage, but the show must go on, right? Pardon the sniffles. We'll see if we can... No. I've been given a stern warning about my sniffling and still refuse to get tissues, so there can be no sniffling. Get ready for a sniffle show. Try to bear with us. I'll try to keep it minimized by glaring at you. Anyway, yet again, once again, Trump is done. They got him this time. He made a deal with the Ukrainian president so subtle, the Ukrainian <laughs> president didn't even know it was a deal, and he covered it up by giving you a full transcript of the conversation. Impeachment worthy. Open and shut case. Nancy Pelosi totally. has decided. We'll break it all down. Uh, I'll, I'm, you've heard tons about it this week. It is dry. I'm going to try to... I want to be comprehensive with the facts, but not have a totally uninteresting show. So we'll try to keep it fun while we go through everything that you need to know about what's happening here. Plus, Greta, is, is it Thunberg? Have we decided? I should have researched this before we went live. I'm going with I'm, Thunberg. People, people are saying Thunberg. Thunberg. Okay. Greta Thunberg. We can go with that. Gives a drama performance for the ages at the UN. Probably won first place at her speech and speech and drama meet. You know, really? Whatever, Did you find that this convincing? <laughs> Very compelling drama performance at the UN. And then the Daily Wire's Michael Knowles refers to her on Fox News as a mentally ill child. And for this, he is to be flogged. And, uh, you know, he was he was called despicable. And uh, and and apparently he's not welcome on Fox News anymore. So how dare he? How dare he, sir? Families of the victims of the 2012 Aurora movie theater shooting in Colorado are making demands to Warner Brothers ahead of the Joker movie release because uh, apparently violence and crime is somehow the fault of Warner Brothers or could be if the Joker movie inspires any of it. So they have to give money to all their preferred gun control causes. Wasn't it just that one shooting? That happened to be at a Batman movie, the Aurora shooting, yes. But there, there, Is that the only reason? Well, there has also been credible threats on the internet that there's going to be incel violence at the Joker premiere. So we can't have any movies that are at all interesting, apparently. Which I'm actually very excited to see this movie even more so now with the controversy. I'm going to go check it out opening weekend, next weekend for sure. But we'll see if I... Joker, right? Yes. We'll see if I have to make a, a... a contribution to a gun control organization before I'm allowed to go in and view the movie. That's apparently the world we live in. Plus uh, a hoax hate trio to close, including an update on that Georgia or that case in Georgia where that ex NFL player destroyed his own businesses in an insurance fraud stunt. Spoiler alert. He's guilty. Allegedly. 
And he doesn't like you comparing him to Jussie Smollett. It's very disrespectful, and he's teary-eyed about it. And of course, we'll take Super Chats on YouTube or Streamlabs in between topics, 10 bucks and up on the Sunday show because we are no good low-down money grabbers. It will be all this and more in your favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show-related and support the show over on the website. That's Matt Christensen Media. Dot com. One of the many things we have over on the website is special deals from listener-owned businesses, of course. This week, our feature business is uh, our friends over at Phoenix Ammunition. Phoenix is a family-owned company dedicated to providing, providing the highest quality American-made ammunition products for competitive shooting, tactical training, range use, or self-defense. Whatever your purpose is, Phoenix has a product for you. Their goal is to ensure every American citizen has the tools needed to protect themselves and to train accordingly. Based out of Metro Detroit, Phoenix Ammunition ships to customers all across the United States and is proud to supply companies like Trigicon, Keltec, and Terran Tactical Innovations. If it's good enough for those names, it's certainly good enough for me, and that's why I'm very happy every time I see the UPS guy throwing out his back, dragging a 50-pound bucks uh, from Phoenix up to my doorstep. <laughs> Phoenix offers listeners of this show 5% off all their products using the promo code MCLISTENER. Find everything you need from Phoenix plus special deals from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses over at uh, mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals, including Sonoran Defense Technologies, Charity Swipes, and Flyover States. mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals. Deals for listeners by listeners. We also got uh, a piece of artwork well, a couple pieces of artwork, I should say. But we are, of course, soliciting Halloween costume suggestions. Yeah. And I'm still trying to convince you <laughs> on Jussie Smollett's attackers, but we'll negotiate that, I suppose. Resistance no, to blackface items. You would have to do blackface over whiteface. I already have white face the over whitest. Blackface. Oh, yeah, it is whiteface over blackface. Yeah. I'm already so white. I don't even know how that works. I would end up with gray face. Nobody would get it. Well, this from our friend Cesarean Pizza, who I think wants us to go as Sarah Silverman wearing blackface, I believe is your costume. And oh, no. me and Justin Trudeau wearing blackface. I think that is that would be a fun one. Maybe uh, we should just go full Prince Harry and just just do it. With the <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's way riskier than uh, Jesse Smollett's attackers, personally. Um, yeah, but we're, you know, our careers are over. We're never going to have real careers. Maybe well, we then why just the commit. resistance? I don't know, because I don't think it's that good. All right. I mean, well, we could spice it up some way. I, I, we've received many suggestions in the email inbox. I appreciate everybody sending me their ideas because I am, uh, I'm, I don't have one that stands out to me just yet. So if you got great ideas, I like, I, I like things that are sensible pairs. Like if we have something that goes together rather than two random things, and I like it when there's like a clever or unexpected element. That's yeah. uh, those are things that earn points to me. And I like news relevance too, of course, like something from the last year in news. Yeah. But what's more classic than like Hugo boss, like classic Nazi, <laughs> the classic SS uniform. Why can't we do that? Okay. okay. Cause you heard it here. You're advocating for it. <laughs> uh, I also got uh, a short video from uh, Jonathan listener, Jonathan, who apparently made a combo Sargon MC pumpkin. Check this out. He's got Sargon on one side, which looks pretty good. And then you flip it over, it's got my MC Look insignia. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, make man. your own gay jokes. Uh, go for it. I, I figured you'd have a few prepped, perhaps. But uh, certainly the chat will if you don't. Anyway, um, speaking of Trudeau's <laughs> blackface. Yeah. Last week, we covered that scandal in depth. And the video was very poor quality, so we couldn't... Uh, we couldn't be sure if he, in fact, had stuffed his pants or not. That was one of the sub scandals. Did he put a Pringles can in his jeans to complete the blackface costume? There's uh, now some higher quality video thanks to the Post Millennial this week. So uh, you be the judge. Here's higher quality video of Justin Trudeau. What do you think? Uh, we'll get a still. Now, you'll notice that the knees are definitely blackened out. That's not just shadow in there. Like, he definitely yeah. blackened his knees with these torn pants. And I could go either way on that bulge. What do you think? You're the expert. Come on. Of course it's fake. 
<laughs> you think it's fake? All right. Does Fair Justin Trudeau act like the kind of man that is walking around with like a, a, a huge dong? Well, I guess what I would, I guess what I'm thinking is it's not so outrageous. Like if you would think if you were going to make a comedic cost, that's not a Pringles can. That's like a, that's like that a is an worst. outrageous. No, that is, that is <laughs> like outrageous. A, that's right. like a full tube sock in there. All right. Fair enough. You, I, I said you be the judge and I'll defer to your, uh, your judgment. Come on. Don't make me, did you just call me a penis expert on my own <laughs> podcast? Hey, you're the one who <sighs> noticed it last week. You're the one who brought Everybody it noticed. Fair enough. What was your favorite uh, Streamlabs free speech on Streamlabs moment? Yeah, is it all over? Those days might be numbered. Oh, that's no. speculative. We have no solid indication that's the case. But uh, <laughs> this Logitech announced it has agreed to buy Streamlabs for 89 million bucks. Ooh. Logitech, of course, makes many computer peripherals, including webcams, the very webcams with which we make this show, in fact. They also own uh, Blue Microphones, a popular uh, streaming choice. And so it looks like they're trying to make one big company to handle all of your streaming needs. As I mentioned, there's no indication from the reporting that they're going to crack down on Streamlabs uh, streaming donations or contributions in the speech that may or may not be allowed there. But one would speculate that as corporate control consolidates uh, the effort to control the speech that is permissible. I have no gripe with Logitech might. now, though. I mean, I well... Know. I, I, I will be fair. I haven't heard anything terrible from them. I'm not aware of any terrible statements. I just get worried when it's like, all right, one big company controls all this stuff. So you better say the right thing. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it'll end badly, I'm sure. Joe Biden uh, had another bizarre moment on the camp, or at least I think it's bizarre. Maybe we did disagree <laughs> a little bit on this. We were talking about it, but he's yeah. on the campaign trail this week. And he's speaking with a local ABC reporter who uh, asked him, uh, given the good economy, why should Iowans vote for change? He's in Iowa. And Biden responded that he will not make the case for that, is what he says. Here's Joe Biden. Well, in Iowa, the unemployment rate is two and a half percent. People say they are employed in Iowa and their small businesses are growing. Iowa well, they picked were, they Trump were by... Before he, they were employed before he got elected. The president won by 10 percentage points in well, Iowa. I'm not suggesting he didn't win by 10 percentage points. What I'm suggesting is he's not the reason for the unemployment rate being down. But why should people want to make a change, though? Well, that's up to them to decide. Why should they? It's for them to decide. We'll make your case. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just not going to make a case on why you should vote for Joe. Uh, well, do you want to go first? You maybe ha you have some Joe sympathy or you can make a case. No, for I've Joe got a his... I've got a blind spot for Joe Biden. Like, I don't hate his guts like everybody else does, because the effects of aging are just too sad for me. So there's just like a place in my heart where I feel sorry for him. And it, you know, creates sympathy where there should be anger, I think. But when I first watched this, it wasn't as bad the second time. When I first watched this, I was like, it's kind of an argumentative line of questioning. And I think when he refused to respond, he maybe was like, refusing to respond to her sir I, I mean, first of all this is just local abc it's not breitbart guy it's yeah. it's as far as i can tell nonpartisan, just local reporter not <laughs> somebody trying to get do a gotcha thing on national tv you're probably right and just, he looks so old <laughs> and sad that's, and confused that's true it's just i just but, oh, poor but guy. the other poor part of this is she's asking probably the most basic campaign question possible which is yeah. You're making a case for change. The status quo seems pretty good. What's your case to make the change? Well, I'm not going to do that. It, it, this is one step better probably than Steve Bollock's moment where he just blanked on the question of what are you most proud of as Montana oh, governor? That's right. These are questions that you have to be prepared to answer, even yeah. if you think that they're phrased a little unfairly, which I don't even think it was in this case, but that's up for, that's up for them to decide. Well, your job as a politician is to persuade them to decide in your favor. So yeah. you don't just stand there and defer. Otherwise, why are you standing there? I know you're right. It's just silly. <laughs> He's, but he is very, very old. You're right. He's very old. We'll see if well, he lasts. The I just look at him <laughs> struggle to, at, to answer these basic questions. And like when he uh, at the debate, when he was like, my time is up, even though he clearly could have talked for like 30 yeah. seconds. The other um, thing. I, Oh, sorry, I just see him do this and I'm like, do Democrats want to lose? I get I get really conspiratorial about this. I'm like, are, are they trying to lose so that they can kind of get behind the scenes and find a way to regain powerful and or regain power in a more meaningful way? Yeah. 
in 2024. Maybe that's what's going on because he's unelectable. I mean, he's ancient and he can't do basic stuff. Uh, nobody really likes him. He's establishment Democrat. I mean, who wants Joe Biden to be the president? Who? Well, people do relative to Trump, but that might not be enough. You know, mm. like, he's, he's hardly any. Well, I shouldn't say hardly anybody because he is still leading the polls. But he's not anybody's enthusiastic pick. And yeah. he's, he, he's leading the polls in a plurality, not once the field consolidates. The other thing I want to say for Joe Biden in the interest of fairness, though, because I saw people circulating this clip. I've not seen the full interview. And I noticed that it is cut somewhat abruptly. It's, it's possible he added more, but I still find his answer to be kind of odd. Maybe there's more. So, you know, investigate for yourself if you, if you think Joe Biden actually hid a compelling answer behind that front. Anyway, you're ready to talk Ukraine gate and impeachment because that's really where this is going. We got I'm rip so unimpressed by this story and that I can't escape it. And then we're going to talk <laughs> about it for like an hour. Or so well, I, well, last week, I kind of... I'm glad we put it off until this week because there's so much more information. And last week I was like, this this sounds like bullshit because of the information that's coming out. So I'm going to treat this lightly for now and maybe more information will will uh, we'll get more, more, more information throughout the week. Lo and behold, that's what happened. But last we left the story, this it was revealed that this whistleblower against Trump did not actually have firsthand information about this allegedly controversial conversation. It was we, hearsay. We talked about it, yeah. Yeah. And so we kind of dismissed it on that front. Lo and behold, I think that's one reason to dismiss this or at least be highly skeptical of the Democratic narrative. And if anything, I'm kind of amazed of the lengths to which they went to lie this week. I do. Think are you are you amazed by that? I mean, it, it was brazen from Adam Schiff making up things in, in front of the House hearing and, and saying it was parody. He simultaneously said there's nothing funny about this, but also I was making parody. OK, so bad parody. I guess is what it was to, as we'll get to later, when I turned on the news uh, Friday morning, particularly on the Today Show, just absolute lies with no textual reference whatsoever, completely one-sided, insanely biased reporting, not giving the viewer the comprehensive information, the full information that is available for us all to look at. I don't need hearsay. I don't need secondhand uh, people making secondhand claims. I heard a guy say this, whatever. I can look at the, the the text of the conversation. Not one word of the text appears on the screen. Right. It's just it's it's narrative control. It's just put a bunch of. I mean, I, you can call them outright lies. They have a very very loose connection to the truth. You be the judge on that. <laughs> I think there's room for some interpretation about what Trump said to this Ukraine guy, but is it at all what's being presented by Democrats in the media? Not even close. Anyway, uh, to, to set the stage, let's let's review the relevant timeline because I want to be clear on how these events developed because it is somewhat important. So this all exists on top of somewhat of a history of political corruption within Ukraine. And I, I'm, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through all of that. But part of that is uh, is is Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, who had these dealings with uh, with a particular company in the Ukraine. And uh, there was a corrupt prosecutor who Joe Biden helps to get fired in Ukraine. And it's always been sus people are suspicious that that was done in corrupt fashion, that it was done. That prosecutor was removed to give Hunter Biden a break, basically. And, and there's a whole history of additional political corruption beyond that. Right. The relevant timeline to this story begins roughly around July 18th. So Trump decides to withhold four hundred million dollars in aid to Ukraine and members of Congress are informed and told that the hold is part of an interagency delay. According to the administration, this is due to on that ongoing history of uh, corruption, which is well documented and internationally recognized, by the way, in the case of that prosecutor that Joe Biden helped to remove, he was internationally recognized for a whole bunch of corruption, uh, even beyond this Hunter Biden issue. And that's what the Biden team would argue. We got him out because the guy sucked, not because we were trying to protect Hunter Biden. Anyway, uh, July 25th, this phone call happens. Trump speaks with the Ukrainian president Zelensky. He's newly elected, uh, or at least within the last year, uh, on the phone. And this is the call uh, for which we have the transcript that's, not, that's now out. We'll go through that right. in a minute. August 12th, an anonymous whistleblower files a complaint with the inspector general uh, for the intelligence community. The complaint alleges Trump made an inappropriate promise to a foreign leader that was later determined to be Zelensky. The IG determines that the complaint is credible and urgent, triggering, triggering a legally required disclosure to the House and Senate Intel Committees. September 9th, the IG notifies the House and Senate Intel Committees. 
September 11th, the Trump administration releases the Ukraine aid it had been withholding. So as soon as Congress is notified, there goes the money. September 24th this week, in a, in a move I don't understand strategically, but I think some people have it figured out, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reverses her resistance to impeachment, announcing at a press conference that the House will work on drafting and approving articles of impeachment. There's going to be an impeachment inquiry. And then this week on the 25th, responding to allegations that he, pre that he pressured the Ukrainian government to investigate Biden, Trump releases a transcript of this call in question. And then on September 26th, the Director of National Intelligence, Joseph McGuire, testifies before the House Intel Committee and a redacted version of the whistleblower complaint is released. And so we'll start with Nancy Pelosi, who, as I mentioned, comes out before we actually have any of the information. We don't have the transcript of the call. We don't have the whistleblower complaint. Nancy Pelosi is already out there on, I believe mm. it was Wednesday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon. One of the, uh, one of the afternoons this week before we even have the, uh, the information at all. And, and suddenly Nancy Pelosi is out totally reversing her past resistance to impeachment and inexplicably loving the constitution. It's because Nancy Pelosi loves the constitution so much. That's why we're getting this impeachment inquiry. Last Tuesday, we observed the ah. anniversary of the adoption of the Constitution on September 17th. Sadly, on that day, the intelligence community ex inspector general formally on notified those the Congress that the administration was forbidding him from turning over a whistleblower complaint on Constitution Day. On the final day, of the Constitutional Convention in 1787. Americans gathered on the steps of Independence Hall to wait the news of the government our founders had crafted. They asked Benjamin Franklin, what do we have, a republic or a monarchy? Franklin replied, a republic if you can keep it. Our responsibility is to keep it. A republic huh. endures because of the wisdom of our Constitution. And then she endorsed the Electoral College. Oh, wait. No, right. <laughs> Institution yeah. enshrined in three co-equal branches of government serving as checks and balances on each other. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. Oh, well, yeah. listen, I love that she's praising the Constitution. Now do the Bill of Rights and uh, maybe we can right. hang out. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, that's rich coming from them now. Um, I mean, I really am putting some stock into this theory that they're trying to sabotage their 2020 chances because they know it's kind of in the bag for him already. Hmm. This, this can't be supported by anybody for real, right? Well, I'll be interested to hear that out. I thought uh, the best explanation to my satisfaction was made by Michael Malice. And I want to kind of close this segment with that. If you have another one, I'm interested in hearing it because this strategically makes no sense for me. And we haven't even talked about the most important fact, which you'll notice in our press conference that there's no specific allegation of criminality or constitutional violation. She would say, I guess that's the point of the inquiry. We do the investigation to establish the facts, to bring the articles of impeachment but if it's just a blank check to investigate whatever the hell you want, that doesn't strike me as seeking truth or justice. That strikes right. me as trying to oust a political opponent. Anyway, uh, House committees have scheduled many officials for testimony in October. There's an unofficial deadline of the end of the year to draft the articles and vote on them. Mind you, this would only be the House's portion of the process, the bringing of the charges. The Senate would also, to remove the president, of course, the Senate would have to vote by two-thirds majority and convict uh, there is no indication that will happen, and the Senate is not currently participating in this but why inquiry. why are they bothering? I mean, this is a That's show a of question. force. Uh, it's a tactical move for their benefit in some way. I mean, they have to know it's never going to get past the Senate. Um, so they must be doing it to rally support. Perhaps they're underestimating that this is going to rally support for Trump as well. I think this is a really dangerous tactic for them. It's obviously going to mobilize his base that may be dissatisfied with him or complacent thinking that he's got it in the bag next time um which is why i think that they're saboteurs hmm. perhaps well there's got to be an explanation beyond we legitimately expect to succeed procedurally because that's not going to happen this congress at least 
Okay, but I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because, of course, they say that this impeachment inquiry is going to be Ukraine-focused. They're done with Russia. They're done with uh, any of the other things they've tried to say that this president is impeachable for. Now it's Ukraine. Now it's this supposed uh, deal made with the Ukrainian president. But right after Nancy Pelosi gives her press conference and before we have the House hearing on Thursday, Trump actually releases a transcript of the phone call publicly. So we can read what happened or what was said on this call, because remember, the allegation is that he threatened, it's either that he threatened the president and said, you will do this or pressured him or right. made some sort of deal. Listen, I want you to do this in exchange. Uh, or I, I will give you this military aid if you investigate my political opponent. That's the allegation. Well, now we can evaluate that allegation, at least in the context of this call transcript. And I'm going to try to be as fair as possible in summarizing this as quickly as possible as well. But if you read through this, it starts with just general pleasantries. This is the July 25th call between Trump and, and Ukrainian President Zelensky. General pleasantries between Trump and the newly elected Ukrainian president. Trump says that the U.S. is treating Ukraine far better than European allies are, and it hasn't necessarily been reciprocal. As in, Ukraine has not necessarily been great to the United States, Trump is saying. And Zelensky agrees, and then Zelensky brings up defense. And he says that Ukraine is interested in buying more javelins from the United States for defense purposes. So we're kind of on this the topic of defense here, but we're not talking right. about the specific aid that is being withheld uh, starting around this time in July. Okay, Trump then, and this is where this is where people get all there. This is where people get all upset because Trump responds when Zelensky's talking about buying javelins for defense purposes. Trump responds, "I'd like you to do us a favor, though." I'd like you to look into Joe Biden first. No, that's not actually what is said. That's just presented <laughs> that way. I would like you to find out what happened with this whole situation with Ukraine. They say CrowdStrike. I'd like to have uh, Attorney General Bill Barr call you and your people, and I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Now, CrowdStrike is the is the uh, cybersecurity and analysis company that investigated the 2016 DNC hack. It was not actually the FBI that did the forensic work on that investigation. It was right. uh, it was this CrowdStrike company that did it. And there's been some suspicion that perhaps uh, this company is, I'm not an expert on why people are suspicious of this company, but people believe that the, the findings may not be accurate, that it in fact covered up for something else. The point is the content of this conversation, whether you believe in a CrowdStrike theory uh, about who actually hacked the DNC in 2016 or not. This is not about investigating a political opponent. This is about investigating the 2016 election hack of the DNC, which is something that Trump is perfectly within his rights to want to investigate. And, and was clearly criminal. Also. And we should all agree, like, yeah, we want to know yeah. what happened, including the Democrats who made this... Uh, prior to this scandal, this was the <laughs> foremost scandal. They, now, now they don't care. Now it's mom on this, Okay. Anyway, uh, then Zelensky brings up Rudy Giuliani. And Zelensky says, yeah, Rudy Giuliani is really nice. He's really cool. I hope we could meet him in Ukraine. Trump praises Giuliani. I think it's perfectly reasonable to interpret this conversation as Zelensky leading a lot of the topics and Trump sort of responding. Right. Yeah. They act like Trump is a mob boss giving this guy directions. This guy's bringing stuff up and Trump is just kind of responding. And then the two discuss general corruption in Ukraine and dissatisfaction with the former Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. And then we scroll down. Notice here, we have to go all the way down from, I would like you to do us a favor. And they talk about all sorts of issues of corruption and the 2016 election hack. You got to scroll down a whole page. Then we get to this. The other thing, there's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution and a lot of people want to find out about that. So whatever you right. can do with the attorney general would be great. Okay, so that that's where Biden is um, is brought is brought up. But notably, Zelensky is also interested in rooting out corruption, and he also asks Trump to forward any information Trump may have to him in pursuit of that effort. Yeah. So, is there a deal here? It's it's very difficult to argue that they don't explicitly agree on any quid pro quo terms. You do this, I'll do that. I'm not going to do this for you until you do that. The defense aid is never even brought up explicitly other than these defense purchases, which right. Zelensky brought up. Any deal has to be inferred. It is not explicit. And so I think it's possible to argue that Trump is using his 
the the influence of his office for political purposes rather than national interest, if you want to say that. But at worst, that's an ethical breach. It's not a legal one. And I think it's something yeah. that it, whether we think it's good or bad, we have to be honest that pretty much every president would probably guil be guilty of using the influence of his office in one way or another for a political benefit as opposed to a official duty uh, purpose. Right. Right. Okay. So that's, that's the, the call transcript. Then uh, before we, before we actually get to the, to the house hearing as part of that house hearing, the whistleblower complaint, the complaint from the intelligence, the, the, as of now anonymous person that we know it's some CIA associated person at this point who made the complaint to the inspector general and the intelligence community, that complaint is also public now in a little bit of a redacted form. And there, uh, the thing to remember about this complaint is this is secondhand. The person who wrote yeah. this complaint did not listen to that phone call, was not a party to that phone call, heard a person <laughs> say something about the phone call and made basically two central allegations to the inspector general of the in intelligence community you know, within the rest of the content of this. But for the purposes of our discussion, there are really two central allegations here. The first is that Trump pressured the Ukrainian president to take action to help tr uh, Trump's 2020 campaign. This what? Complaint, How? <laughs> that's what I heard. Someone talking about the phone call yeah. said that he pressured it. You, if you interpret that in the transcript, I, you know, I welcome someone to quote it to make that case, but uh, that's what the complaint says. The complaint also does not, notably, does not allege a deal, merely pressure. It says Trump pressured. There's no allegation of a, a quid pro quo. Well, you do this, I do that type deal. Media have, and politicians have twisted this allegation into, into that sort of thing. Um, and then the other allegation is, is a cover-up, basically, that instead of storing this call transcript uh, on a computer system where the transcripts of such calls are typically stored, the White House stored it in another system that is otherwise used to store classified information of a sensitive nature. Uh, and so I'll explain why I don't think either of these allegations hold water, uh, at least impeachable water. But well, uh, go ahead. I mean, why would that matter? Isn't isn't it to their discretion what they do and do not classify as secretive information? I mean, people should, to some degree, there has to be, there has to be some degree of secrecy in, in in the government. I mean, there. Has well, to be. and broadly speaking, I mean, we'll speak to this in in a little bit too. The president has broad authority in conducting foreign policy. Congress has to declare war, but in terms of international relations, just diplomatically. Yeah. President has broad authority that way. And yeah, he has authority to classify or declassify. In this case, declassify for you to look at. It's hard for me to believe cover up when it says, here you go, have a look. Um, right. Yeah. So is and, it a And breach how of, can people possibly claim that it's not just this specific level of scrutiny that's levied against Trump? I mean, nobody gave a shit when Barack Obama had that hot mic moment talking about having more And that's power the other the problem. If you're going to be honest about this being impeachable, you've opened the door to a lot of conduct within both political parties being an impeachable offense. But like, why can't the that. American people just admit that this is kind of par for the course in terms of diplomacy and that all presidents do stuff like this? Because it's not about any of those principles. It's about getting Trump out of office. Yeah. They're going to sorely regret that they've behaved in such a way when they get a candidate in and then we scrutinize him to such an, an intense degree. But that'll be different because reasons. You know, it's, that'll be totally different. They lack foresight. They're impulsive yeah. like children. They need immediate satisfaction. So all of this is the context to the House Intel Committee hearing on Thursday, uh, chaired by Adam Schiff, of course, Mr. Pencilneck himself. <laughs> in which Congress questions the director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire. And I'm not going to, I'm going to spare you the questioning of the director of national intelligence. Cause we didn't learn that much from this questioning. It, they're trying to get him on this cover up angle. They're trying because the content of the, of the call is not actually that controversial. Now it's this cover up. Oh, it was a, it was a breach in process. You failed in process. You tried to cover it up this way. You tried to cover it up that way. The, the notable thing about this meeting that I want to play is that Adam Schiff opened the meeting. His opening statement, he gives a characterization of the transcript that is 100% made up <laughs> right. instead, of just list, instead of just reading the transcript itself. And then when called out about it, he says that it's parody. Here's what he said. 
And so what happened on that call? Zelensky begins by ingratiating himself, and he tries to enlist the support of the president. He expresses his interest in meeting with the president and says his country wants to acquire more weapons from us to defend itself. And what is the president's response? Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. Shorn of its rambling character and in not so many words, this is the essence of what the president communicates. We've been very good to your country, very good. No other country has done as much as we have. But you know what? I don't see much reciprocity here. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent, understand lots of it. On this and on that, I'm going to put you in touch with people, and not just any people. I'm going to put you in touch with Attorney General of the United States, my Attorney General, Bill Barr. He's got the whole weight of the American law enforcement behind him. And I'm going to put you in touch with Rudy. You're going to love him, trust me. You know what I'm asking, and so I'm only going to say this a few more times, in a few more ways. And by the way, don't call me again. I'll call you when you've done what I asked. This is, in sum and character, what the president was trying to communicate with the president of Ukraine. It would be funny if it wasn't such a graphic betrayal of the president's oath of office. As an aside, I want to mention that uh, my colleague is right on both counts. Um, it's not OK, uh, but also, my summary of the president's call was meant to be at least part in parody. The fact that that's not clear is a separate problem uh, in and of itself. Uh, of course, the president never said, um, if, I, uh, if you don't things? understand me, I'm going to say yeah. it seven more times. My point is, that's the message that the Ukraine president was receiving in not so many words. Uh, Oh, so now they understand parody. How fucking convenient. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, and it this wasn't is so parody. absurd. I mean, the, the way this, this, said, this is the truth. This is the, the essence of, of what he says. And yeah. then he says a bunch of things in a voice like Donald Trump in the same cadence with the same kind of language that he uses. Like, you'll love it. You love, it. you know, yeah. Trump says stuff like that. Um, that's just so absurd. I mean, he knew that people were going to assume yeah. that he was oh, yeah. reading the transcript. Yeah, I, uh, I I take a lot of issue with that because he closes that first statement saying it would be funny if it wasn't so serious. And then he's called out. Everybody goes, well, it, it would be serious if it wasn't so funny. And then he's <laughs> mad at people for not making the distinction. Generally, as you know, I'm pretty willing to assume good intentions on the part of people. I can't see this as anything other than a cynical attempt to get the soundbite out there stripped of the explanation to right. get that news clip out there and get that to stick in people's minds who aren't going to read the transcript. Cause let's be honest, it's really boring. And it's I really boring, but it's not that long. It's like, yeah, but I understand why people don't want to read it. I don't want to read it, but it's my job. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I can't, I can't assume any good intention from Schiff on that one. I think that's about as slimy as it gets, personally. Yeah. I mean, did they play that soundbite on CNN? And strip uh, it I don't context? know. I, I, ha I, haven't, uh, I haven't seen an example of that, but it could exist. Um, uh, and yeah. I mean, even if it was supposed to be funny, though, since when do we open congressional hearings? You, you butter up the crowd with a stand-up bit. When has that ever been a standard practice? This is... a Adam Schiff is somebody who's always about being solemn and serious and, tr the, you know, treating treating his office with dignity and the dignity of the office of the presidency and this and that. All of a sudden, he's the funny man. He's the clown in the room. Why? Well, it's a testimony to how dumb he thinks everybody is and if effective, which I bet it was a uh, testimony to how dumb everybody actually is. Yeah. I mean, I bet a lot of leftists heard this and they just let that sound bite stick in their head. And then they're telling their friends like, no, he said this. This is what's in the transcript. The essence of it. Ugh, what an asshole. Okay, so in terms of their arguments, if they're actually going to do a Ukraine-focused impeachment inquiry, impeachment effort, they have a few different arguments that they could try. The first is this quid pro quo angle, this formal deal. That Trump it was, was so nonspecific. It's way too nonspecific for them to take this. Yeah, this tax I mean, the allegation would be Trump withheld taxpayer money to advance his political interests. And... You have some circumstances that maybe you could infer that, but the point is there's no direct evidence. It's way too flimsy. There's nothing explicit in the transcript to support this. There's nothing explicit in the whistleblower complaint to support this. Indeed, uh, Zelensky himself actually denies such a deal. Zelensky is like, uh, 
yeah, I uh, Trump never pressured me to do this. I never made a deal with him. I'm completely unaware of this. Right. So that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, and, and then, of course, no deal ever materialized. The aid was released, though I will grant that it's perhaps a little circumstantially suspicious that Congress gets notified of this transcript, then the aid goes out. Interpret that the way you may. The point is, the evidence to say that this was a quid pro quo is way too flimsy for anybody to accept, anybody reasonable. It's going to take more. You got more evidence? I'm happy to look at it. Okay, so they have the cover-up. If it's not the quid pro quo angle, it's the cover-up. Uh, Trump sought to bury the transcript. He sought to prevent Congress from getting access to the whistleblower complaint. Well, first of all, he didn't. Okay, he didn't. He Trump voluntary, voluntarily declassified the transcript. The director of national intelligence released the complaint to Congress. And it was, as we mentioned prior, the president has broad constitutional authority to conduct foreign policy and broad constitutional authority to classify right. or declassify. That's within his powers. You can like or dislike what he does or how he does it, but it's sort of like disliking a law that Congress legitimately passes. Like the, the process is legitimate. It's within their constitutional authority. So to me, this ends up sounding a lot like Russia, which is the cover-up is worse than the non-crime. Like that ended up being the angle on the Mueller report. There's no crime, but the cover-up of that non-crime is what we really uh, care about. So if there's no quid pro quo here, the cover-up to me is a lot less meaningful. No crime to cover up? Why do I care about the cover-up? Yeah. They have to answer that. Uh, and, and then in terms of why they treated this conversation the way they did, the, the, let's say that this is true. I, I assume it is true that they put this on some classified computer system. Well, the Trump administration has been plagued by leaks of similar conversations with international leaders, one with uh, Australian leaders and one with Mexican leaders. It does make sense that Trump would want to keep these things more secure. Indeed, there's an article in the Washington Post this week under the headline, effort to shield Trump's call with Ukrainian leader was part of broader secrecy effort. Okay, so it's not Are actually unique. Are they listening unique. to themselves? <laughs> the um, and perhaps even if they, they classified this specifically, uh, maybe they had foreseen that the left would use this as fodder, irrespective of the content. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with them using measures like this to protect the administration from leftist tactics. I'm fine with that. I don't give a shit. Well, and it, it appears that they're general that the tactic was that generally speaking, not with this transcript specifically, the first couple paragraphs of this article. The White House has taken extraordinary steps over the past two years to block details of President Trump's phone calls with foreign leaders from becoming public, following embarrassing mm -hmm. disclosures early in his in his in his administration that enraged the president and created a sense of paranoia among his top aides. The number of aides allowed to listen on secure drop lines was slashed. The list of government officials who could review a memo of the call's contents was called. Few copies or fewer copies of transcripts went to agencies and they were stamped, quote, eyes only, do not copy. And some officials who deliver call memos had to sign for the records to, to create a custody record uh, if they were to leak, according to people familiar with the moves who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe them. So it sounds like there's broader efforts to, to treat this stuff with higher levels of security, not this call specifically. Right. And in terms of putting it on a, a classified server, Susan Rice was asked about this, former Obama official, and she, she said, well, you know, it's rare that such a move would be made, but yeah, Obama did the same thing. There were examples of him <laughs> doing the exact yeah. same thing. I don't want to mischaracterize what she's saying. She's saying it would be out of the ordinary, but not unprecedented. Mm-hmm which to me is an, an acknowledgement that yes, it did happen. And no, he was not impeached for it. We didn't care about a cover up back then. Okay. And then the last, the last piece, the last case they might try to make is just this, that it's just generally wrong to solicit foreign help for political purposes. And we can debate the merits or ethics of doing that. But the trouble of course, as we mentioned, is that Democrats do this all the time, too. As you mentioned, Obama famously asked for flexibility from Russian President Medvedev in 2012, give him space before the election, because then he'd have more flexibility afterward to work with uh, the Russians on various issues. The DNC, of course, worked uh, to compile the Steele dossier, uh, mm -hmm. the famous Pissgate document with British intelligent agent Christopher Steele. And then specifically with Ukraine and Zelensky, uh, Democratic senators met with Zelensky in Kiev and told him that if he investigated Biden, it would strain the U.S.-Ukrainian relationship and implicitly jeopardize aid. 
That was stated by, uh, there's a quote in this Hill piece from uh, Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy. So what you're left with is a very flimsy case that is void mm -hmm. of criminality. You really have a case of debatable ethics in terms of impeachment. But it's hard to argue considering it's something Democrats have done in multiple recent episodes. So I don't see how they right. make this case credibly without saying, yeah, we're also going to fundamentally change how we govern and operate yeah. accordingly. But uh, perhaps it doesn't matter <laughs> because, of course, this is a political battle. It's not a one with legal objective standards. Mm -hmm. What matters is votes. Uh, it's, it's not what you can prove to a jury or anything like that. It's, it's what you can get uh, congressmen, uh, representatives, and, and senators to vote on. And, of course, the Democrats have near-unanimous media allies on this. And that's, uh, that's what I was talking about earlier. When I turned on the news on Friday morning, I couldn't believe <laughs> the outright lies we were watching. I hope that'll come across in the context of what we've just presented, because the Today Show was covering this all morning, and they have on an Obama defense intelligence official to make the case to describe what's going on here and why you should care. And he yeah. explains his interpretation as fact goes unchallenged. And I'm not even saying that I disagree with the interpretation. There's stuff he says in here. That's just factually untrue. Notice as you watch this, as I mentioned, there are no textual references whatsoever. No quotes, nothing on screen. It's not because they're lazy. It's because the text does not support what they're saying. Here's what they said. It's NBC's White House correspondent Peter Alexander and from Washington, our national security analyst Jeremy Bash, who was chief of staff at both the CIA and the Defense Department in the Obama administration. At its heart, in its simplest form, what is this alleging and why does it matter? This, Savannah, is the most serious allegation against an American president in our country's history, that the president used his office to press a foreign country to interfere in an American election, that he enlisted the Justice Department to investigate a political rival, and that White House officials were so alarmed by it that they launched an elaborate cover-up. There's talk this morning, Jeremy, that this is, that implicates national security. Why? Well, instead of defending an ally, Ukraine, which is in the fight of its life, the president was holding back that aid until the Ukrainians would investigate the Biden family. Let's talk about this notion of hearsay. The president mentioned it before the diplomats at the U.N. saying this is all secondhand. That may be the case, but isn't it now proven by the document that the White House released? That's right, Savannah. That July 25th phone call, which we now have a near transcript of, actually is much worse than the whistleblower's complaint. The whistleblower says that the president was pressing Ukraine to investigate his political rival. What that transcript now makes clear is that he was actually offering a, 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 a deal. If you investigate my political rival, I will release that critical military support to you. Well, that's so fascinating what Jeremy says, Peter, because in the end, it may be that the, the, the most damning piece of evidence came from the White House itself, its own quasi transcript. Yeah, what was decision making behind releasing that? The president was being told by two of his top aides, Stephen Mnuchin, Mike Pompeo, the secretary of state, you know, this is not a good idea. This is a bad precedent, but it sort of serves as evidence now of how caught off guard the president was about the fact that frankly, he thought he did nothing wrong in this call. And I think at the end of the day, the fact that the president himself said, here you go, here is that call could be the most consequential element of this entire moment. Oh <laughs> Trump God. really got himself. He did it this time. What a buffoon. Uh, it's, it's so dishonest. It's so it, dishonest. It is ridiculous. I, I, this, this is just a brazen disservice to uh, the average consumer who, as we mentioned, is just not the average person. I'm not taking shots at people. I understand it. You have a job. You have a family. You're not going to read this crap because it's not really relevant to your life. You're supposed to rely on these people to present you with the information in a comprehensive, yeah. unbiased way so you can judge for yourself. The trouble is they have possibly the most biased man in the world, former Obama administration guy to give you a politically partisan case and act like it's objective. This mm -hmm. is about as slanted and void of the facts as it could possibly get. Uh, yeah, maybe I was too hard on Russia for killing all those journalists. Maybe was... <laughs> Vlad really had something going. <laughs> Uh, the most serious allegation against a president ever. Uh, okay. I mean, come on. That's just absurd. We talk There's about previous just... impeachment cases or, you know, what would have gone to impeachment. Clinton perjured himself. Nixon burgled and spied on a political opponent. Last decade, we went to war on falsehoods, cost a lot of lives. 
you be the judge, but I can probably name something every president has done that is more significant legally or ethically. I think I could yeah. come up with at least one thing in every administration. There's a He's, silver lining to this, though. Um, I mean, the left is going to continue to spin their wheels with an impeachment that is never going to come to fruition. It's just absolutely not. Uh, they'll waste a bunch of time and resources. They'll exhaust their base. They'll, they'll mobilize the right. Um, I think this is probably good. And as the, when the leftist media does this, it incrementally erodes the very little remaining trust people no. have in them. Um, so I'm kind of loving it. I don't know. I, I mean, as somebody, I, I'm available to say a libertarian candidate or somebody who satisfies my principles a little bit more than Trump does. But this kind of stuff, to your point, makes me more vote, motivated to vote for that man out of pure spite and rage, which is largely what motivated me the first time. <laughs> me too. They'll, yeah. they'll get me to the ballot box doing this sort of stuff. He, he says, uh, the, 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 uh, correspondent, the, the Jeremy Bash fellow on, uh, on the Today Show says, Trump was holding back aid until the Ukrainians investigated the Bidens. That's totally unsubstantiated by the information that we have. Yeah. Zelensky did not understand that to be a deal. It has to be inferred mm -hmm. with little to no evidence to support the inference. Uh, the, tr the transcript proves a deal, he said. No, it doesn't. Show me the quote in the transcript that proves a deal. It makes no mention of a deal, and Zelensky had no knowledge of a deal. It's uh, the most damning piece of evidence came from the White House itself. Well, first of all, that undermines the cover-up narrative, which seems to be what the Democrats are going with for their impeachment angle. If that's the case, the most damning piece of evidence was voluntarily given to us. That's not a cover-up then. Mm -hmm. so just throw that out the door. Right. And then what's the more logical conclusion? That the evidence is not in fact damning, unless you twist <laughs> it the way that... Th the way that they're twisting it. And then he says, White House, White House officials warned against releasing this transcript. Could be, but the reason they, they uh, did that, the reason they hesitated to release the transcript is not because they thought it was damning. They hesitated because re releasing conversations with foreign leaders every time you guys bitch makes right. honest communication with foreign leaders extremely difficult. Who's going to want to talk to Trump now? If you're a foreign leader, knowing right. that the U.S. media is going to make some hysteria over it every single time, yeah. you're not you can't have honest conversation under such a such a system. And that has been a tactic of the left this entire time, uh, like forcing these these ways to freeze him, to make to immobilize him yeah. in his diplomacy. They, they've done this continuously the entire time. And then at the end, they're, they complain about how he's been ineffectual. And then there's a question of, is it working at least uh, according to public opinion polling in terms of public support? And if this particular poll is any evidence, uh, it, it could be. Voters are now evenly split yeah. on whether Congress should begin impeachment proceedings against Trump. 43% support, 43% opposed, 14% undecided in the latest political, uh, Politico morning consult poll. This same poll showed uh, 7%, uh, or this is a 7% bump in the same poll. Uh, relative to the most recent uh, taking of, of the same question, uh, in, in a poll at least. Uh, support for Democrats has increased 13 points, now up to 79%. So the biggest bump is actually among more moderate Democrats. You saw some, even I, I believe even Tulsi came out in support of the inquiry now. Yeah, Just, which is very disappointing. Yeah. So you see some of those more moderate, quote unquote, sensible Dems now on board with, I'll be fair, they're not saying impeach him now, they're saying, inquire they're saying investigate but to me that says that they view this as sufficient right. uh, probable cause so to speak and I, I i don't think that that's a fair interpretation of the facts we've been presented and so to close i just want to talk strategy and um as i as i mentioned regardless of um of public opinion i just can't understand the strategy here because you have zero you have zero shot of conviction and removal from office that's off the table and they have to know that um it seems to me like the smarter political strategy would just be to concentrate on winning the election. And indeed, I think they have a 50-50 shot at doing that, probably. But the best case I saw was from Michael Malice in this tweet this week, and it's something that totally makes sense to me. He tweets out, get ready for it, talking point 2020. A president under threat of impeachment, credibly accused of treason, has no right to appoint someone to the highest court of law 
particularly in an election year. And so whether it's the court that's at stake or just Trump's presidency, I really think this is just like the Kavanaugh situation where they've substituted a quote unquote credible accusation for due process that we're going to treat credibly accused as the new standard of justice, whether it's in a court of law or public opinion. And in that context, it makes sense to me. It's just about staining a guy rather than actually getting him out of there. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to govern because they can't. <laughs> I mean, what's what's your sabotage theory? I need this explains me a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I think that the left does better when they're sabotaging the right, when they actually get into positions of power. It's on display for everybody to see how incompetent they are. Hmm. And um, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you you can't you can't deny that the economics make everybody's lives worse, worse during democratic reign. So maybe they just feel more comfortable allowing the right to come to power and then sabotaging them. And they feel like they inherently have more power from that position. That is true. It certainly is easier to be the heckler on the sideline than it is the person who's actually doing the governing or making things work. Yeah. I, uh, I gotta think that's the strategy they're going with because it just, uh, Uh, I don't know. It's risky. It's just very risky. I think the motivational factor, as I mentioned to people like me who are not necessarily the most fervent of MAGA hat wearers, but will vote for him to protect important principles. You really want to get people like me out to vote for him enthusiastically. Start, start doing this crap because I think it's a, I think it's a betrayal of, of what the intended use of the impeachment system was. I think it's a betrayal of the fundamental presumption of innocence that extends to the president of the United States as well. I think this is a mockery. I don't think this is based on anything legitimate. And if it was, yeah. we would see this sort of treatment to Democrats, but we don't. And, yeah. and yeah, it's uh, it's beyond politics, this sort of thing. It's not about protecting a president I like or don't like. It's just mm-hmm. protecting the integrity of the system that we've built. And I see these people running roughshod all over it. It really riles me up. Don't attack the process, man. The process is what keeps the peace. And they're yeah. always attacking the process. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got is to say. Is it over? Um, is it over? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll, we're going to see a show until the end of the year. And... Uh, And I think to the point Michael Malice was making, it seems somewhat arbitrary that they'd say, well, we have a target of the end of the year. Why? Why? Why is this? Why is January 1st? Why isn't the truth the target instead of some deadline? Because my narrative about the election year, credibly accused in an election year. That's why 2020 matters Yep, in their assessment strategically. So uh, we're going to see a show until the end of the year and probably beyond. Get ready for it. I hope it... If you made it this far, everybody, thank you. We're going to move on to more entertaining topics. Oh, I hope it, wasn't, hope it wasn't too dry. But this stuff is important because this, all these talking points are going to be thrown at you at school and at work. I hope people have sufficient information to know what is legitimate and what is absolute trash. Because if you hear stuff like that was on the Today Show, that's absolute trash. You shouldn't accept it. But it doesn't matter. And we don't need to be preparing talking points because they're going to continue making baseless emotional arguments to rally people on the left. I don't think we have to be particularly prepared intellectually. We need to think like them. We need to think like, how are they going to react? They're going to react emotionally to everything. There's going to be no basis in truth. Preparing ourselves with rationality and familiarity with the truth is not going to be of any benefit they clearly don't give a shit i dream of a rational world committed to the truth that's my it's so annoying man you're just projecting all the time it's not no it's never gonna happen we need to adopt understand and then employ alinskyite tactics i just don't left i don't want to become them that's the thing i I don't yeah i know i don't either so that I, i i hope that we have the ability to you know bring it back to a normal level but we have to fight on the same emotional idiotic level that they're fighting on or they'll continue to win i don't know all i can go with is i I, i'm not dismissing the case that you're making because i I think it's probably a person-to-person circumstance as opposed to a hard rule all i know is for me the the way that i was pulled away from them and to this side if you want to call it that was by people who assumed my good intentions and made arguments and cases to me that I couldn't refute. And so it's like, well, if I can't beat them, join them. And here I am. You're a rational person and you're trying, you're trying to act like rationality is going to be an impetus for inherently irrational people. It's not, that's not how they think. They think in terms of winning and that's what we have to do. The most important thing here is winning. 
I don't well, care how we do it. I will nuke every principle that I have if it means <laughs> that we will win. That's why Rose McGowan says we're a terrific team, a terrific team on <laughs> on all counts. It's because I, I I think there's truth to the to what we're both saying here. I don't mm -hmm. think that one is absolutely correct and the other is uh, is absolutely wrong. And I think there's a reason that we pr consistently end up at this. Uh, at this juncture, I don't here, even yeah. want to say it. A di it's a disagreement because we fundamentally share the base level values that we're trying to get towards. It's just it's no a question on of, principles. I agree yeah. with you on on basically everything. But if we lose our culture, if our society crumbles, if we have to live in this leftist dystopia, then I don't want to be here being like, well, at least I just immediately went to a Ben Shapiro voice. You at know? least we lost with dignity. <laughs> at least we principles. lost with dignity. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I will get down in the mud with these people. I will play their dirty games. But like, we have to win. We got to start accusing people of rape baselessly. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what it is. I'm not saying that. But like when when people get legitimately me too, like what kind of happened with uh, Cory Booker when we hear these these um, stories about people like that and. It's like if they're going to do this to all of our candidates, um, maybe we should start treating all of those uh, hmm. accusations with the same credibility that they're treating the Kavanaugh sure. accusers. I get it. I care it's, about the it's truth. It's holding too, them but to their standards. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, we're halfway through the show, so we got to move on. Let's take a break and uh, and then we'll talk about Greta Thunberg. It is and, uh, Thunberg. It's Thunberg. And Thunberg and her controversy. Well rather Michael Knowles's controversy about what he said about her this week. You got a uh, super chat ready? Sure do. I got a couple over on Streamlabs if you're, you need a moment. Oh, I just want to address something I saw in the super chat. Somebody said, hmm. um, we can't do this because it would cement the can the cancel culture. And while that is true, if we, if we contribute to the cancel culture, I don't think that it'll um, make cancel culture ingrained. I think that once everybody is subjected to these standards, it will lose its power because we've all incriminated ourselves in some way in our personal lives or on social media. They literally cannot do this to everybody at some point. They'll just have to stop doing it. It is unsustainable, but I think yeah. they have a ways to go. I think they have plenty more left in the tank, unfortunately. Yeah. And we should really only be doing it to the specific people that have done it before. I think that's a fair standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Mountain Monk Blonde, could you give me a quote for the cost of a charter membership in your cult? Uh, there's a sliding <laughs> scale based on your percentage of Western European heritage. Ah. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin Flanagan. Uh, hey, Matt. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I forgot something on my list of things I like about Israel. <laughs> Israels are some of the best dancers in the world. Google dancing Israelis to find out more. You everybody Nobody should Google you, that. Kevin! That's my new Kevin Flanagan sounder. <laughs> a torrent 0411. Kevin Flanagan got his 23 and me today on an unrelated story. A man forced his way into a bakery and tried to hurl himself into an industrial oven. <laughs> <laughs> they may or may <laughs> not be related. <laughs> Luckily, staff was able to subdue him until police arrived. Good. Um, Joshy boy, child actors from a Disney movie on television sound more compelling th than that little twerp. I assume you're talking about Greta. Greta. No, we'll, we'll hear from her in a little bit, yeah. Ivan Zamago. I started with Ben and Crowder, then found you guys, and I realized why I like Matt over them. Matt talks about his opposition, whereas Crowder and Ben talk to their fans, creating a bubble that can get them, that can get caustic and changes them. Well, I never oh, talk well, shit thanks. on Crowder, but I'm always open to talking shit on Ben. At any time you want to talk shit about Ben, this is your hub, apparently. This is, this no, is they're, the they both do great work. And I wish I could, honestly, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I wish I could talk to more people of opposite. I can't. Do, I, I try, but at this point, it's I'm getting really discouraged. And I actually think Stephen Crowder does a fantastic job of talking yeah. to leftists. Uh, he's out there doing his, his Change, Change My mind. mind. Yeah, He has people on his show all the time. He's... I think he's got a way better track record than me, certainly in doing that. So, you know, but I, I'm not trying to deflect your praise. I'm glad you're here and thank you for listening. Yep. Um, Richard enormous Matt and I made love Greta interrupted us and forbade us to have children. Matt took it, <laughs> took it on the face, <laughs> put some lipstick on and went to see the Joker. Maybe I hate this is you what guys. he meant by talking to my opposition <laughs> for real. Uh, fat yeah. hooligan. You've stolen my childhood. You've yeah. stolen my dreams. Yeah. Ten bucks to That's convince me that Theta Grunberg is not a Batman villain in the making. Mm. I'd go see that movie. 
Um, <laughs> Kevin Flanagan. Bronson, do you have any idea who this white female mentioned in the intro is? I wore my eye makeup like this today just for you, Kevin. Just By to the be... way, hmm. I opened my 23andMe today just to like look. It has changed from 0.1% Native American to 100% European. It changed. I thought it was Asian. Wasn't there an Asian component? It was 0.1% um, uh, East Asian. And then yeah. I looked a few months later and it was 0.1% Native American. And then I looked today and it's both of them are How gone. How can they and change over time? Are they changing their measurement? That's the I only don't know. way, I guess. I, I mean, I guess they're acting like they're recalibrating the data, but this is prob okay. probably some stupid tactic to make everybody think that they're not 100% white. Um, Spring heel Jack is Greta and OPEC an OPEC shill a China shill are both tough call. I don't know. Um, Robin <laughs> yeah, says you guys, you guys are the best. You make my week sane again. Shout out to my lovely wife, Lisa, who's in bed sick, but likes listening to you guys. She loves blondes, spicy takes. I feel your pain, oh, we'll Lisa. Better. I feel your pain. I hope you feel better. JV dude. Can we start calling Tulsi Gabbard coconut milk? Mommy. <laughs> I'd like to get a taste of that coconut milk. I mean, I guess the only thing, good thing that she has going is like her boobs. This impeachment good, take good is fitness breathtakingly routine. stupid. Yeah, I'm, I heard, but I didn't watch I'm bummed. it. You can go check it out on our Twitter. Yeah. Um, Dakota Stanton, Greta sounds like a Star Wars villain hyped up on crack. Uh, let's do a few more. It does look like a failed, yeah. Like uh, she lost out to Daisy Ridley in the audition tape, yeah. but barely, just barely. A Daisy Although, Ridley in her know. giant mouth. Leave Daisy alone. Form. That chick's a freak show. Daisy really uh, did nothing wrong. Oh, whatever. Uh, yeah. EC Morgan 69. I can't stay, but I wanted to toss a few shekels. Have a great stream. I'll be watching it in the morning. I can't wait to hear Kevin's super chat. If blondes, blonde reads any good night. I read all of them <laughs> so far. Uh, Kevin yeah. Flanagan. I'm going to end on this one because it's a uh, fantastic. Got to admire Trudeau's dedication to the blackface. His, his dad <laughs> didn't just go to the store for the Newports. He was off running an entirely different country. <laughs> well, I, I do like that theory, as I've said. I'm a fan of that one. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> let's see. We got quite a few over on Streamlabs, so I'm going to just get through a few of them and we'll come back later. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Phil, Philip says, did you see Scott Adams and Jake Tapper doing charity work recently? Both sides attacked, uh, attacked them mercilessly. If you really want to earn your hit piece, try doing charity in public. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just like Carson King in Iowa. Don't do not do charity or you'll get a routine background check that turns up all your racist tweets. Cameron says, uh, hey, Matt, your recent video gave me flashbacks to the heel stream where $26,000 were a $26,000 donation to St. Jude's was declined after the Wall Street Journal intervened. Remember that the, uh, is it Lugan Press? What's the German term? I What's the term of the year? I think that's what it is. Re whatever. Remember the press are the enemies of the people and must be treated as such. Keep up the good work. Yeah, that story was ridiculous. And yeah. um, if you want my full thoughts on that, go check out my latest video. I'm glad the money is going to the kids, but it's, it's to stain this Carson King fellow because he wrote the N-word or something in 2012. Yeah. What a ridiculous story. Uh, and thanks, Cameron. Phil says, in case anyone is keeping track, Adam Schiff uh, is another case of... <laughs> I can't read that one. Another case of uh, a suspect character. Jonathan says. What do you mean you, by that? Thank you, Phil. The The pumpkin wasn't. Uh, oh, Jonathan says the pumpkin wasn't me. I can't carve anything. It was my sister. I subjected her to a show a couple weeks ago. Now she's sold. Blonde has a new female fan. She did a great Calgary Flames and Raptors logo last year. And I suggested YouTube logos this year. Well, she did a great job. And thank you for tuning her uh, or uh, getting her to uh, tune into the show. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Um, I'm going to come back to the rest over on Streamlabs later. And I want to say thanks to uh, Constantine, Paul Dog, and DC uh, for supporting the show over on Streamlabs. I'm going to open up the uh, the treasure chest for you guys right now. So sit tight over on Streamlabs. And thanks for tuning in over there. Let's get to Greta. Because uh, we talked a little bit about the climate strike uh, last weekend, but Greta had not made her speech before the UN yet. And I have to uh, admire the performance that it was. Jeez. So uh, on Monday, she actually spoke before the UN Climate Action Summit. The whole strike was leading up to this event, and then she spoke at the event, and she gave, uh, well, the, the sort of performance you would expect from a, a high school drama student. Here's what she said. Greta, your first climate strike 
was a lonely event a little over a year ago. And in the intervening time, you have sparked the interest of millions, literally, of children around the globe, demanding action for climate change. What's your message to world leaders today? This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I, I know, should bitch. be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen no, my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are <laughs> suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation, and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil, and that I refuse to believe. <laughs> and if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Oh, oh. Okay, this obviously birthed countless memes this week. I wish I had time to go through many of them because they were hilarious. I just want to give a shout out to my favorite one which is uh, Greta at Walmart after her mom says no to buying her a candy bar. All you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so there were many fantastic examples. Uh, I'm glad that all those memes came to be because it made for a really entertaining week. Yeah. I just got to say, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and dissect her speech. I just think... Who are these weirdo adults who get off on being lectured by a child about their carbon footprint or something? Oh, yeah. yeah tell me how I'm doing a terrible job. God, yeah. I love that. Thank you. It's um, yeah. it's weird. And, and the thing I'll say about Greta, too, it, ironically, whether she believes what she's saying or not, I th if she believes what she's saying and she's not 100% acting, ironically, these adults have stolen her childhood. They have filled yeah. her head in a yeah. lot of... Uh, people we saw at the, the climate strike last week filled the heads of these young people with ideas about the apocalypse and impending doom and no hope. And, and they did that shit to us when we were young too. About what though? Y2K, Don't, I, I was told that. Y2K. I yeah. was told that acid rain was destroying our environment. We'd have to live in bio domes. We got fed all sorts of horse shit like that. I mean, people love to scare children into action and then use them in their vulnerable state. Yeah, Plus they're filled with energy, up, you know? Yeah, it's messed up. Um, I think it's terrible. Yeah. And then But uh, she's old enough to be the subject of derision. I mean, we can all agree on well, that. Well, right? she she has entered the political arena and we've been we spoke about that on Wednesday a little bit. She's like, "When is it to what degree is it okay to criticize this child?" And we'll get into that momentarily, but I do think when someone voluntarily enters the political arena at a bare minimum level, right. they have volunteered themselves to that political theater and attacking them on political terms is absolutely fair game. Can you strictly separate political attacks from personal attacks? I suppose, but there is kind of an entertainment factor to politics too. And so I'm not going to be the moral police about you called a child stupid, or I think nope. you called her a bitch last week or something. Like that. I will grant them the, the same lenience that they threw at Nicholas Sandman for being fair, a yeah, child. Fair. So they can go fuck and, themselves. No, and by this the way, chick, Sandman, we should be ripping her apart. Sandman was thrust into the this. spotlight. Yeah, he did not he volunteer himself. Yeah. He was just there. He just happened to be there. Anyway, uh, of course, everybody's debating climate change. They're debating what's okay to say in critical terms about a child or not. That is the context for the Daily Wire's Michael Knowles appearing on Fox News on Monday to discuss such things with uh, Democratic Party activist Chris Hahn. Do you remember that segment with Corey Lewandowski not too far, uh, not too long ago when, what was the context? They were describing a child who was, the, the Democrats had claimed there was a developmentally challenged child locked in a cage at the border and Corey Lewandowski went, uh, womp womp. And then oh, we yeah. heard, um, they said he heard, had Down syndrome or something. It turned out not to be true. And then we heard this sound right. bite. How, How dare, dare you? How absolutely dare you, sir? Well, I think this is close to that level. But you be the judge. 
The climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child who is being exploited by her parents and by the international left. You. You're a grown man and you're attacking a child. Shame on you. She's trying I'm to not, do I'm what she thinks the is, left thinks is right. And by the way, now right, relax, skinny boy. I got <laughs> this. Okay, you're attacking a child. You're a grown man. Have some. Coop, I'm not. I'm attacking okay, the left for exploiting television. a mentally I, maybe on, ill child. Maybe on your maybe on your podcast, you get away and say whatever you want because nobody's listening. You're on national television. Be a grown up when you're talking about children. She's trying to save the planet because your president doesn't believe in climate change and kids need to take to the streets to worry about their future. <laughs> you are despicable for talking to her about her like that and you should apologize on national television right now. I think the, the international left and her parents who are exploiting a girl with many mental illnesses. You called her, her mentally, Ill. mentally Ill. Take it back now. She is Take mentally it Ill. Back now. She is mentally Ill. She has Take autism. It she has now. obsessive compulsive disorder. She has selective you mutism. Are she had you depression. are despicable. Her mother... You what? are despicable. Oh Why is anybody okay. trying to go anybody from he's a, a YouTuber, right? He's on uh, Daily Wire. Is that right? Yeah, he does a show uh, on Daily Wire. I wish people in this realm would stop trying to cross over with mainstream media, because when you say something that is totally true and doesn't even seem like it's that controversial like that. You know that Fox isn't going to have your back. They're going to bitch out. The only person that can get away with stuff like that is Tucker, and it's because he's so wildly popular. So well, naturally, maybe Fox, Ann Coulter, which Ann Coulter yeah. did praise this. She said, "Great good, job." Good, he yeah. should. That that, that yeah. is a mentally ill child. She has a litany of mental health disorders. She's being exploited by the left and then hiding behind her pigtails. And we're not going to act like she's a sixteen-year-old girl just because yeah. she looks like she's seven. Well, to the points of fact, I mean, I guess the criticism that they're making is, she, of course, she she has discussed her own Asperger's. She calls it her superpower. She's been diagnosed with OCD. I think there are a few other diagnoses. The point that the critics are making is those shouldn't be qualified as mental illness. They're disorders. OK, we're talking semantics. Yeah. And beyond that, the context is not Michael Knowles saying, ha ha, that child has mental illness. No, the context is this is a minor who has certain mental conditions and you're putting this person up in a manipulative, exploitative fashion for political purposes. Right. And I find that to be bad. The point is that children with mental conditions are vulnerable, not that he's laughing at her for the conditions. Mm -hmm. But of course, those are distinctions. That, I'm glad um, he didn't. Um, he didn't apologize. So no. But as you mentioned, Fox totally caved. Uh, they apologized for this exchange, what was their statement here? Uh, a Fox News spokesperson says the comment made by Michael Knowles, who was a guest on the story, uh, the show uh, tonight, was disgraceful. We <laughs> disgraceful. We apologize to Greta Thunberg and to our viewers. And then there's this story too. The Yahoo is saying that he's banned from Fox News. Uh, what I read in the story is just a spokesperson saying that he's he. They have no plans to invite him back. I think banned is a little bit unfair of a characterization, but no it sounds balls. like they're not going to bring him back. Good yeah. Grief. Can we take a page from the leftist playbook and stop addressing these things and wait for it to blow over in four seconds when no one gives a shit about this anymore? Just don't issue a statement. Don't apologize. Never apologize oh my God. no and uh and as you pointed out Knowles did not where are his tweets maybe it's in the past one here yeah so he didn't apologize he did issue a few tweets explaining his position and uh he said the following in, in a sequence of tweets there's nothing shameful about living with mental disorders did Greta's mother insult her when she wrote a book describing the child's struggles with mental and developmental disorders children should never be exploited for political purposes and mentally ill children are particularly vulnerable and so what are we left with in this story all we're left with is a mechanism for adults to browbeat their political opposition with instead of actually debate an issue on the merits which was exactly Knowles's point ironically yeah <laughs> like that was case in point that guy saying how dare you you're a despicable person and you must apologize that as though your outrage is some sort of currency that that can yeah. just be or they, like it gives you some sort of authority through which to make demands of other people I don't care if you're mad. The point is, what are the ethics of putting up a child front man for your political cause? That's what we're debating. But yeah. instead, we're going to shame people. Um, yeah, I mean, they're going to continue doing this. And I think as a society, we need to decide if, if a 16-year-old is really a child. 
Uh, well, I all I will say is like, uh, I guess the distinction is we were talking about Soph on on Wednesday too. Like, what's the difference between Soph and Greta? They have political differences, obviously, but is one okay and the other not, or are they both okay? I think that as long as there is, I would draw a moral distinction between uh, a, the the minor in this in this case voluntarily entering in the political arena with the parents' consent versus uh, some sort of influence to push them into that position. And uh, I it, I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't particularly have an issue with somebody being thrust in the spotlight, like a child who thinks that they're doing this for a good cause, being thrust in the spotlight. But the trade off here is that she has to accept the derision that comes with yes. this kind of position. She doesn't get to have the power and influence and none of the criticism. Uh, those things always go together and she would be subject to criticism by everybody, people. I, I mean, anything's on the table. The way she and by looks, the way, I, her mental illness, it's all fair game. I have and would say the same thing about self. But, uh, additionally. Yeah. I, but um, Soph can handle it and roll with the punches. This sure. little girl, I bet she's like a huge pussy about it. But that's the point is the people who criticize Soph, who don't like Soph, I have never gone to them and said, how dare you? How absolutely dare you? Right. You're a scum human. It's like, well, you, you disagree on the politics. What's the age uh, of consent in Sweden? It's 15 years old. Fine. She's an adult in that country. Hmm. You know, isn't that the standard for adulthood in, in all of our countries? I suppose. I mean, you have to draw a line somewhere. A lot of the times, those the, those lines are somewhat arbitrary, but they have to be drawn. So you, I, that that's fine standard for me, I guess. It's a fine standard for me too. So she can have sex legally with like a forty year old if she wants to, but we can't criticize her about politics because she's wearing pigtails. Hmm. Well, this makes no sense to me. We should operate by the age of consent. That should be the general standard for whether or not you can enter the political realm. Which means Soph is protected and Greta is not. I like that. It well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I get bet you. I, you, Soph you is more to... mentally fit to deal with this than mm. Greta, and she's two years younger. Well, uh, I wonder uh, if what's going to happen with Greta. Are we going to see ongoing political leadership, if you want to call that, or is she going to become that meme like Christine Blasey Ford, where she's shoved out of the SUV that is the Democratic Party and she rolls on the road away from news relevance? Do you depends think depends uh, on how useful she is? Them. I bet uh, I bet we're not going to hear from her for a little while, but I bet she'll stay active. I, I don't think she's going to quit. I, I bet we'll hear more from this girl in the future. We will, because she will continue to be useful. Hmm. And then they can play this card like, oh, she's criticized this child. You're criticizing this child. It's, it's just excellent for milking social currency from, from other people. Yeah. yeah, you can just browbeat morally instead of argue your case, just like this guy on Fox. Once she starts to look like a, an adult woman, though, she's going to be worthless to them. Then she gets shoved out of the yeah uh, shoved out yeah. of the van. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about the Joker movie. Well, what do you think? Um, you want to talk about Joker movie and then take a break, or take another short break now? What do you think? Let's take a wee break. Okay, and then now. we'll talk so Joker and the the demands the demands for the producers. Yeah. A uh, liberal slayer. Mm, I just read this one. Oh no, I didn't. Ugh. Do I have to read this? Matt and I were once at a party together. He came in my blackface, if you know what I mean. <laughs> also, hello from Gunshine State. Izzy, if you out there, where was TGC News last week? Mm, the Gun I Collective. Oh. They're uh, yeah, they're a good uh, they're a good gun channel. I like to follow. And Izzy, the editor, is a sometimes in our uh, chat. Uh, hey Izzy, what up? Sorry, I didn't know who you were. Uh, Alien Veritech, you guys should go as Greta Thunberg and David Hogg. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to catch the whole show. Got to work, but have my money anyway. I mean, there's just no way. I, I think we, when we discussed this last time, I, I'd have to go anorexic for a month, the entire month to be David That's Hogg. another thing. I'm supposed to believe that like, hey, skinny man is some kind of insult. Michael Knowles is like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not fat. Like what, what do you? I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I, if those two were going to fight, I'd probably take Knowles to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he's not like, that's not, skinny is not the, what I think of when I think of Michael Knowles. I mean, it's what I think of when I think of Beto O'Rourke. I like guess. Skinny is a defining characteristic. He's just but a I, trim I like, guy. He kind of has narrow features, but yeah, I don't. He's, he's got big shoulders. I, he doesn't seem like a particularly skinny man. I don't know. What a and weird. And also, how is that relevant? Yeah, like, <laughs> for the guy uh, who's lecturing about attacking people on supposedly out-of-bounds terms, and he goes straight to, uh, 
whatever. Yeah, it's bizarre. Uh, Boogeyman917, penis expert. Thanks for the laugh. Yeah, thanks a lot, Matt. <laughs> uh, Lextermine. Lexterman, Lexter Mine Seven. Hey guys, long time listener, first time supporter. Love the work you do. Things well, can thanks. get lonely as a millennial black conservative in New York. Holy shit! Wow. New York City. Um, blonde luck, is not man. only woke, but she's straight up savage. Oh. Well, there you go. Very nice. I like it, man. Millennial conservative black in New York City. That's a tough, mm. a tough road to hoe. Good luck, um, Simon Reichik, Reschike. Resh cheek. Awesome. Hasn't the he told girl... you how to pronounce this? Every time. Yeah. Awesome. The famous girl said my name, kinda. <laughs> Richmond Tigers <laughs> won the grand final, by the way. Also, no Aussie rules. Football is not rugby. Oh. That's... Aren't they similar, though? Aren't they close? Don't talk to me about yeah. that run forward, throw it backward game. It's oh. all stupid and gay. And for I don't, big I don't know, homos. obviously. Uh, Spark Chaser Bear, been watching for two years, first time live. Doesn't that Greta girl sound like the girl in the never ending story? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Hmm, yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. Leaf Sandiger. Um, where did you get your white nationalist or hipster plaid? Uh, I've had this one. I don't even remember where I bought it. I've had it for probably like five years. So oh, really? I couldn't even tell you. Really? Yeah. Most, of my, uh, most of my flannels are from Vans, Vans.com. But they're not even produced anymore, identically. I have, I have, I have a few emails from time to time, people asking. Tunberg, is that right? I heard Henrik uh, say it on his channel, and it was like so different from the way we say it that I it would have been. I heard her say it, and it was like Toonboo. Greta, like, Greta Toonboo. I don't know. Toonboo, or something like that, yeah. Um, Robert Monroe, Matt and I once made love, then Sephira Blonde. Said that's gay and put us in a camp. I came out a lumberjack with a full beard. Oddly enough, oh, I now get more wood than <laughs> ever. Thank you. Uh, all right. Stan says Nancy Pelosi. No one is above the law except sanctuary cities and states. Pelosi advising illegal immigrants yeah. on how to avoid ICE. Actually, looking into the Biden <laughs> accusation. Those are above the law. Good point, Stan. Good point. I, yeah. Funny. Uh, we don't care about the rule of law when it comes to immigration law. That's absolutely true. <laughs> Kevin Flanagan, I'll, I'll read this. I'm game. I'll read this, Kevin. I'm doing oh, it. Okay. Yes, we should never use military aid to further political goals. We just need to unquestioningly give it out to countries that sink our ships, steal our nukes, and fly planes How dare into you? our buildings. <laughs> How dare you? Last one. So we uh, no, on but the, the, on a serious point there, what is the other side of this criticism? Because certainly having conditions on aid why is that not our sovereign right now i agree yeah. that the president shouldn't abuse taxpayer dollars in such a way but the other side of this coin if that is what happened and i don't think that's what happens here at least i'm not satisfied by the evidence but the other side of the coin that the democrats are advocating is apparently no conditions whatsoever be as corrupt as you want do whatever yeah. you want here's a big pile of u.s taxpayer money no questions asked enjoy who endorses that standard that's a garbage standard nobody wants that yeah um, last one for right now, uh, Lunderwear. I seem to remember some other socialist group using children as tools of propaganda in the 30s and 40s, but I can't <laughs> seem to Reich call who it Okay, was. Dinesh, calm down. Oh, well, climate kids <laughs> are the new Hitler youth. Yeah. Um, I mean. All right. Okay. So just a couple okay, Dinesh. Uh, <laughs> over on Streamlabs. Uh, Phil says, I heard a pastor speaking the other day about how the church is growing by leaps and bounds in Iran. I have to wonder if those. <laughs> what? What is it? Say it. Apparently that's true. Phil's getting spicy, dude. He's doing Kevin's. I, I have to say thank you. <laughs> Frenchinator2 says, I see the evil twin of red pilled soap did a thing at the UN. How dare we? <laughs> Greta has Asperger's like me, and at the age I was easily manipulated by adults or at that age I was, I had little interest in being with my peers. Greta, F you, dumb people believe in God, me smart. <laughs> I think that's the character. Yeah, he's characterizing what she's saying, I believe. Uh, Kim says, I don't understand all the backlash against Greta Thun, Thunburg, Thun, Thunboo, Thunburg. whatever she's, yeah. In fact, I kind of agree with her. We must, sec <laughs> we must secure the existence of our people at a future for our children. Yeah, maybe that's what Greta means. I don't know. Phil says the left doesn't worry about the, the right using uh, precedent to unseen a Democratic president. 
They know that those who claim to represent the right politically are either afraid to use power or are in it, uh, incentivized to stay away, to, to stay out of the way of the neoliberal agenda. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we arrive at those questions that we were discussing earlier. Like if, you are, if your view is predicated on principles of decentralizing power and a skepticism of the exercise of power, yeah, of course nat you're naturally reluctant to want to wield it abusively over other people. And sometimes you need to swing that sword. That's why Blonde's here. Uh, yeah. Regal Fraggle says, can't watch tonight. Here's some birthday money for you guys. Have a great show and call Kevin an undesirable. Cheers. Well, thanks and happy birthday to Regal Fraggle as yeah. well. And also, by the way, happy birthday a few days late to J Fry. Just don't type really? happy birthday in all caps in the chat because he will bust you for that. And also, of course, happy birthday to you on, uh, was it, it was uh, Friday, right? Your birthday. No, no, it wasn't. Alone. Your birthday's coming up too. Happy 23rd birthday. Yeah, Thank I, you. Uh, mine is uh, October 18th, if anyone's keeping track. So uh, we will get to the rest of these later on in the show. Thanks, everybody. You know, that like, was the second time you said the 14 words on the show. Uh, but it, that wasn't the full thing. That was that. It was that close. Was, it was close, but it didn't have the specific racial reference. I can't believe that's controversial. I've said it zero times. You've said it twice. Yeah, that's true. I, I, have, I have a lead on you now. So. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. The Joker movie, which uh, I was excited. I think this movie looks great, even independent of the controversy. I'm excited to see yeah. this movie, even though I'm not a big Batman guy. I think it just looks cool. I like the kind of dark, gritty uh, vibe that it's putting out. And, and I think Joaquin Phoenix looks like he's doing a good job. And by the way, I like how he's handling this criticism too. So this political controversy makes me all the more likely to be yeah. in line to get a ticket on Friday or Saturday this weekend. But... This movie supposedly glorifies mental illness and violence. And so families of the victims of the 2012 Aurora Theater uh, shooting in which Batman, uh, The Dark Knight Rises, I believe, was being shown. They're issuing demands to Warner Brothers to make amends because somehow this violence is Warner Brothers' fault or future violence will be their fault or they're responsible for gun violence. I don't know. Here's them making their case. Warner Brothers' new film Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, tells a dark origin story of Batman's arch nemesis, with, at points, a sympathetic take, a social outcast struggling with mental illness who transforms into a killer. I'm very concerned that a movie that, that makes it seem glorified in any way um, might be encouraging someone who wants to be the next mass shooter. Sandy and Lonnie Phillips' daughter, Jessica, was killed in Aurora, Colorado in 2012. Now Jessica's parents have signed a letter, along with five others who lost loved ones, calling on Warner Brothers to help fight gun violence with a series of actions, uh. stopping short of asking the studio to pull the movie entirely. A corporation that is making money off of gratuitous violence needs to be taking care of society as well. Small point of distinction. They're not making money off of gratuitous violence. They're making money off of fictional depictions. Right. Okay. The movie's lead actor has faced pointed questions about the film inspiring violence, reportedly walking out of one interview. Joaquin Phoenix later saying this to IGN Entertainment. They don't think it's the responsibility of a filmmaker to teach the audience uh, morality or, or the difference between right or wrong. In the same interview, director Todd Phillips pointing to a larger cultural message he hopes the movie sends. The movie makes statements about lack of love, lack of compassion in the world, and I think people can handle that message. In Aurora, Colorado, some disagree. The theater where the shooting took place seven years ago has no plans to show Joker. Oh, good, good for you. Grief. <laughs> well, okay, I know that something really sad happened to them, and I'm sorry for their loss, but that is peak boomer nonsense right there and if i get killed in a shooting i hope my parents don't do anything fucking lame like that <laughs> so lame As be though, cool mom and dad be cool well, i i need them to explain the connection between warner brothers and the shooting more coherently i, I don't she was killed at a theater or at a movie therefore people who make movies of similar theme must make amends right. because they're responsible because reasons i really 
There's I, I irony to this too, because that was a movie that she chose to see, presumably because she was interested in the content. Of course. Why? Yeah. Why was she there to be entertained? And that's, yeah. that's the point. Well, they're a company that's making money off of violent depictions and they have a responsibility to take care of society. No, they don't. They have a responsibility to entertain me in exchange for money. That yeah. is the arrangement. They have no responsibility to care for people. They're welcome to do that if they want to make yeah. their own charitable donations. Good for them. But in this arrangement, they are to entertain me and I will pay them for that entertainment. But even if I grant the premise that they have some responsibility, think of the leap to say that my proposals are going to help. So their specific yeah. proposals are no more political contributions to NRA associated politicians. So quasi censorship. Yep. We're going to lobby Congress for gun control. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to punish law abiding citizens and, and donate to survivor funds uh, and gun violence intervention programs. Well, donating to recovery efforts. Okay, fine. I'm sure that's helpful, but should they be coerced into doing that? That's the question. And the rest of it is just is, is restricting the speech and defense rights of law abiding citizens. Is the implication that if there was yet another law stacked on top of what crazy man James Holmes did in Aurora, if there was, if, if that would have been triple illegal, all those murders and, uh, Attempted murders he committed that day. He had no criminal he background, stopped. though. I, yeah. what, what's their plan here? Like nobody should own a gun, irrespective of whether they not have whether or not they have a criminal background. And what's what's the irony? People like you and I, the bulk of the people who listen to this show, anybody who supports the NRA or even has left the NRA on principle now, but people yeah. who are gun uh, rights advocates, what do they want? They they want nothing more than to be able to defend people like that daughter in that theater. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. Uh, Listen, I try to basically everywhere that's legal, I'm going to carry for my own safety, but particularly in places with limited escape like that, like movie theaters, hundred percent, right? Because I, two things are true. I will never accept, uh, living a life at the mercy of a crazy person like that. He might shoot me and I might die, but I will not be kneeled before him, uh, begging for my life. And the other thing that's true is I won't allow people like that to intimidate me out of going to see movies like this because I think nope. it looks cool and I'm not going to be afraid to do it. So that's why exactly. I want to carry and I want to protect people like that. And, and by the way, if I was in such a scenario where he opens fire when he has, and he has tear gas and all this nonsense, if I'm not armed, I'm looking to the guy next to me and praying that he is. Yeah. That is your only hope in that circumstance. And I really, really resent the implication that people like us are are indifferent to the death of her daughter or that we don't that I prioritize my target shooting fun over the life of her daughter. No, I I would I hope to God that I would be brave and proficient enough to help somebody like her if the moment demanded it of me. And if I fail, I hope the guy next to me is equipped and proficient to do it mm -hmm. because somebody's got to. Yep. The, the, I, this sort of thing it just, it, it bothers me, the implicit accusation beyond the censorship issue and the idea that, well, certain people shouldn't be able to express certain things because it makes things dangerous. Even that aside, the implication that if I don't agree with her gun control agenda, it's because I'm indifferent or actually want this sort of thing to happen. That's, no, I mean, uh, we have an understanding that a responsible gun ownership saves lives. And I wonder if we could convince her of that, if she would change her mind or if she would still be trying to use this as social currency. Yeah. Um, I mean, and nobody's going to criticize her because her daughter was killed in a horrific circumstance, but um, I mean, she's wrong about this. And when what she's advocating for is dangerous to the general public uh, and to our constitutional values, yeah. to our nation as a whole. Um, and we have to rage against it and not worry about what people think about us when we criticize somebody that's had something horrible happen to them. Sure. Um, I just hate this attitude in America that because something, some freak thing like this happens, that something has to be done. I mean, yeah. we don't always have to follow horrible events up by action. It's not always good. It's it's bad to be reactive, to put legislation in place um, because you're feeling reactive and emotionally impulsive, uh, it's almost always going to be a net negative on society. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope, uh, I understand why people are reluctant to, that that's the trap that you fall into. You know, if you're, if you're, it's, it's the same reason we have this community because if, if you're in a position at work or in school, you really can't criticize a person like this. That's why yeah. they do it is they say, well, I, I'm a victim. Therefore, everything I say about this issue is correct. No, actually it's, it's wrong. It's dead wrong. And I guarantee that uh, that 
an armed person, an armed responsible person would have been the best equipped to help your daughter that day. I wish that person was there. And uh, yeah. I hope that person is there for the next person. Uh, and I mean, it's a, I don't know. Uh, I, I really hate this abdication of responsibility too. Like it's their responsibility to do X, Y, and Z. It's actually your responsibility to promote proper values in your life and your and responsibility to yeah. instill them in your family. And I believe in my family that a proper value, in addition to being a good person, want everybody's family to take care of, of themselves and promote good people such that shootings are not a realistic risk. By the way, they're a very small risk right now. But to the extent that they exist, I also think it's a good value to promote proficient self-defense capabilities. Yeah. And that's a value that I'd promote in my family. And she's free to promote the values of helplessness in hers. But when you start telling me how to run mine and that your values ought to override my values in my own home or on my mm -hmm. person when I'm out walking in public, sorry, lady, I'm, uh, that's, it's, it's, you're, you're overreaching too far and you don't have sound reasoning to do it other than your victim box. And I, yeah. maybe I shouldn't even phrase it that way because I am sympathetic to her victimhood. It sucks. I hope, I hope that never happens to me. I don't ever want to live the life that she's lived, burying a child that way. Yeah. My intent is to prepare such that I don't or at least that I can avoid it to the best right. of my ability. Yep. Anyway, okay, uh, back, to, back to comedy, kind of. If you're, if you're ready to talk hoax hate. Uh, do we have to listen to the sounder? Yes. God damn it. Maybe I'll sneeze during it. And now, and I don't the care if the nobody saw it happen, me. but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? Well, recall a few weeks ago, we covered the story of the former NFL player who runs pizza and ice cream shops in uh, Georgia. Apparently, his claim, uh, or at least... It, it's been discovered by police now. He ransacked his own shops with racial graffiti and made an insurance claim before the police even investigated. Because recall, he gon' be rich. <laughs> recall, he was caught driving with his own TVs ripped off his walls <laughs> in his pickup with black paint all over his hands after he spray painted backwards swastikas and N-words and MAGA all over his shop. Well, along with his lawyer, he is now speaking with the media. He's saying he's innocent. That in fact, there was a burglary at his business and he was there cleaning up the mess. And that's why he was found the way that he was. Here's what he has to say. His attorney, Jackie Patterson, says Edon Kaufman will fight charges of misdemeanor, false report of a crime and felony insurance fraud involving a September 11th incident at two businesses in a Gwinnett shopping center that's gone viral. Unbelievable how much stuff has happened to me in these last two weeks. Uh, good business is going. I have nothing. No. You've seen online where you're compared to Jesse Smollett. Correct. How's that feel? I feel like it's disrespectful. Allegations he faked racial slurs and bad. Is he, by the way, is he implicitly admitting that the Smollett case is bunk? I, I thought maybe yeah, the so. team Jesse did nothing wrong. I, I, I guess so. Okay. There, there's the graffiti you'll recall. Vandalism at his own restaurant and tried to collect the insurance. Guilty or innocent? I'm innocent. He had reported this incident to his insurance company prior to the officers even conducting that first pullover. If you think he's <laughs> guilty of insurance fraud, I ask that you prove it because you'll never be able to prove it. A September 13th, Gwinnett Police News release Down. suggested that Kaufman lawyer? apparently yeah. came up with a, quote, premeditated plan to damage his own property and, quote, attempt to make it appear as a hate crime. That a back door had yellow pry marks. A search warrant on a truck Kaufman drove led to a yellow crowbar and cans of spray paint. An officer spotted several TVs in the truck. The brackets were still attached and there was still drywall attached to the brackets, meaning somebody took them off very quickly. His place had already been burglarized. So therefore, he decided oh. to go get the rest of his property out. The emotion seemed to break loose after we thought his on-camera interview was over. Well, you understand how hard it was for me to get to that point. I had to do a lot. Coffin says the emotions came because he overcame having Those a father TVs in prison heavy. since Coffin was three. <laughs> bouncing from house <laughs> to house, so sometimes heavy. homeless, to make it to college. I worked really hard to not be in the system. Then the NFL for six years, then ownership of a pair of pizza restaurants. Kaufman indicated after he got out of jail, someone vandalized a second business of his. They did some oh. racial slurs. I'm just in a place that I have to rely on God. Oh, my okay. God. First of all, did he hire, like, an actual local pimp 
to be his attorney. He looks like uh, like discount Spike Lee or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He, if you're only listening, you got to <laughs> check this dude out. It, just just, just in case people need another visual. There he is. Oh, my God. Yeah. Nice bow tie, though. I think he what stole that one off a of leprechaun. This? this is the worst hoax hate since we gon' be rich. This might it's, be worse than that. It's almost as bad as the guy that robbed that church and then used the money to buy crack. <laughs> yeah. I like that the uh, the lawyer says, you think he did it? Prove it. Well, they had probable cause. <laughs> they they have charged him with evidence sufficient to bring the charges. <laughs> I'm guessing that they will, in fact, prove it. Um. I mean, to, to, to this theory that it was burglarized and then he just arrived on scene and was recovering the property, it doesn't explain why he called the insurance company first, which they don't dispute. He called the insurance company before he called the police. And then what was stolen? That has not been explained. There's no property that was stolen. These burglars just came in and... What was he I doing guess, with the TVs? He was in the middle he, of staging a crime. What is he saying he was doing with the TVs? He's saying he got there and they were like ripped off the wall and he just recovered them and was bringing them home or something like that. So like he, he called the insurance way. company before he finished staging his own crime. And this before the, the police no, had investigated. Yeah. This is dumber than we gonna be rich. This it's is really dumb. And mind you recall, he also, as they said, I didn't hear about the crowbar originally. Moron. He had a yellow crowbar in his truck and there was evidence of a forced entry with a yellow crowbar on one of the doors. So there's that as well. And then he had the black God. paint all over his hands. Like, okay, maybe you were cleaning up the mess. Was the paint still wet when you were cleaning it up? And were you scrubbing it by hand? Ooh. And if you were there that quickly, you didn't see who it was. Like, they weren't there. Like, they left and 30 seconds later, you came in and wiped your hands all over the wet paint. Oh, okay. this is so dumb. Prove it. Prove it. Well, I in, I will come back to this story, and I anticipate that the prosecution will probably have proved it. Can you imagine if this guy tried to get away with, like, a murder or something? <laughs> I wouldn't try it. Uh, so dumb. I didn't, I didn't have time to look into this haircut story closely. So I, on a surface level, was on the fence about this one. Maybe oh, you... Oh, come on. I just... Well, you tell me the facts, and we'll watch a brief news story about it. Uh, some we'll, little, I just don't know enough. Some little tiny liar is talking about how three boys tackled her at her school and then barely cut her hair because it was nappy. She's clearly lying. Her parents probably convinced her to do it. It reminded me of that, um, hijab cutting story. Oh yeah. The one in, I think it was Toronto or somewhere in Canada. It's like a ringer for that story. We should watch the clip. Okay. Here it is. This is what, uh, in Virginia at a, at a Christian private school, right? Yeah. But Wednesday, Amari Allen finally decided to tell her story. Look how sad she says she, is. she was on the playground in Emanuel Christian School in Springfield when she says three white students held her against her will and cut her dreadlocks. They put my hands over my back, put my the hand over my mouth, and so they started to cut my hair. All the while, the 12 year old says the boys called her hair ugly and nappy. Amari's grandmother says she enrolled her in the private Christian school, expecting a safe experience. I've never thought about it bullying being part of this curriculum. The family has filed a police report and they say they had a meeting with officials at Emanuel Christian Thursday morning, but they say they left the meeting unsatisfied. That no other child has to experience what she experienced and they just walk away. As for Amari, she says she has compassion for the boys she's accusing of violating her. Something could have happened that made them do this. That because that's I know that's like the source of most bullying. Nope, nonsense. Also, I want to point out that like, if you're going to orchestrate a hoax hate like this, you cut your hair. You make yourself bald, you little bitch. Well, make yourself bald. Is, like, cut so it all many, off. You can how many barely is she alleging, tell. How three, many boys, she, three? three boys tackled her and gave her hair a moderate trim. Because Did her they hair cut so like super, one dread? I don't know. I mean, this is clearly a lie. She could barely get that story out. And also, she seems like she's probably just like a weird kid. And she ran the spot past her parents. Or maybe her parents don't know that she's lying. But like, I would bet a million dollars this did not happen. There is a GoFundMe up, but I have to note that it's from somebody in Oakland, California. I don't know if there's a relationship to this person or if it's just somebody. There's doing a GoFundMe. A, there is a GoFundMe, but it's not yeah. her or her direct family, I, I think, who set it up. I'm not sure who the organizer is. It's from Oakland, California, and this allegedly happened in Virginia. So I, I'm wary of the GoFundMe evidence. But I do find the story to be bizarre. Like these boys overpowered you for 
a period of time and they held you against your will and they were intent on cutting your hair, but they, and they covered hardly your cut mouth your hair and held all. your neck and no, this didn't happen. No. <laughs> Next. <laughs> well, this one is, uh, this one seems like a more clear cut case, which, uh, apparently, well, I'll let you go through the facts, but the gist of it is basically there's a radio station in Louisiana and one of the hosts tweeted something and then the radio station account replied saying you're a fag or something with the F F word slur for gay people. And then he tried to sue the station or hold the station accountable for like millions of dollars for harassment or something. And the guy's a real Peter Puffer, like IRL. <laughs> he's, he's openly gay. Yes. Yeah. So, and uh, they traced the IP and it was this guy's cell phone. Okay. I've, I've got a news story on this one too. So here's, here's uh, the gist of what happened according to the local news report. WWL Radio's attorneys say the homophobic tweet sent out to its followers on Twitter targeting its host, Seth Dunlap, who is openly gay, was sent by who Dunlap is a himself. Giant bag. In a police report <laughs> filed this week, WWL Radio's parent company, Intercom, told police they hired a digital forensic specialist who, quote, discovered that the tweet was sent from an IP address associated with Mr. Dunlap's personal cell phone. The report mm. goes on to say the radio station has surveillance video showing what Dunlap was doing minutes before and after the tweet went out. Obviously, he suffered some intense harm. Yesterday, Dunlap's attorney, Megan Kiefer, says he took and passed the lie detector test, which she says proves he wasn't responsible for the tweets. Where are the corresponding polygraph tests from the other WWL employees? I mean, we know that 14 of them, at least, had direct password access to this Twitter account. Seth didn't. Intercom told police during a September 12th meeting with Dunlap, he asked how much money they would be willing to pay before he quotes, scorched earth. This hmm. could very well lead to criminal charges if you have done something like that. So that's why you have to tread very lightly uh, because there could be uh, ramifications in both directions, I might add. Kiefer then says she and Dunlap met with Intercom this week and claims the company, quote, illegally accused him of extortion in order to scare him <laughs> into accepting little to no compensation for the company's <laughs> actions. So he's Whenever trying to flip it on that. somebody them. starts yeah. saying, I'm going to do this, and unless you do that, it can be deemed extortion. For one thing, you cannot tell someone, unless you do something, I'm going to be be bringing criminal charges against you you cannot threaten criminal charges in in exchange for money so he's basically trying to double flip this on the station yes. if i understand it correctly initially yes. he if you believe the evidence that is to say they have the the tweet came from his phone and they have footage of him going into a room and leaving the room closing the door at the time of the tweet yeah and it came from his phone so if you believe that's the case he set this up to try to sue them for millions of dollars. They said, no way. And they investigated and they said, we know that you did it. And he said, now he says, you're threatening me with, with criminal charges, which is itself a crime. He's, he's alleging they've tried to reach some settlement with him it's in exchange. It's a double cross or something. This is a weird case, but it seems very obvious that this guy sent out people are so unprepared and he thinks that can he he can just skate past by hiring a giant lesbian as his attorney <laughs> well, and then like nobody's gonna he notice passed, he passed a polygraph where's know, where's like, the who cares as, people a can take a propranerol yeah. and pass a poly, polygraph i bet i could pass a polygraph about things that i'm lying about any she day of the week she didn't offer a satisfactory explanation of what he was doing in that room with his phone at the time of the tweet then i don't care what the polygraph says when it's observable what was going on on tape. Yeah, I know exactly what he was doing with his phone. He looked at a bunch of gay porn and then he <laughs> tweeted to himself, you're a fag. And then he expected to cash in. Yeah, but this we, seems we got to um, be rich. Yeah, this doesn't seem like a very well thought out hoax either. Like you none would of think, these are. You'd think you could set it up to make yourself not trackable in that way and still try to cash in. You'd have to have some kind of partner or something. Somebody Couldn't who would you just read... use your laptop and use a VPN? Yeah, yeah, or cover your tracks or frame somebody else who agreed to be a party to the conspiracy or something like that, you know? Right, these are all yeah. so dumb. Yeah. And by the so way, dumb. 
Separate legal question that the legal minds among our audience could answer, but let's say this was true. Let's say that like some trolley intern at the at the radio the radio station was like, "Haha, I hate that guy." And let's say it was even accidental or something, and they thought they were tweeting on their account. Whoops! It turns out it was the radio station's account. And it says, "Lol, you're." This a is fag. another one of those. If true, don't care. Yeah. Why is that worth millions of dollars, or is yeah. it? That come on, we're gonna fleece the radio station because of someone said a bad word on Twitter. Is that really? Everybody's such a baby. Can we le- can we actually accomplish that legally? That seems really broken to me. Can somebody orchestrate a hoax hate that's gonna give us a run for our money? These are so boring. Once we're banned off YouTube for good, perhaps that will be our next mm. business venture. Yeah, really. Uh, all all I can say is if if the station ends up in trouble over this because he really worms his way into some weird accusation against them that's going to be a sad day but it seems like yeah. if that legal analyst is to be believed he might have a case which is you know what his attorney's crazy, name crazy is world. uh i didn't catch it i'm sure it's in the story though oh let me know in the live chat i, I gotta i gotta look into this chick i've All just right. never heard anybody say that a polygraph is like a an absolute like basis for innocence because he passed a polygraph it's like that's yeah. the only thing she had to say but we passed a polygraph so. yeah that's a weird Yikes. case to make all right uh let's uh let's catch up with uh, streamlabs and super chat and we'll get out of here um sock puppet joe democrats never think of the consequences of their actions they are always for the immediate gratification ain't that the truth yeah Aaron Nuclear, very good point about the lack of foresight blonde. Adam Schiff also tweeted almost exact accusation from whistleblower weeks before the information That's was provided true. to Congress by the CIA. That's another angle, that he, there's good reason to believe he had this information well before other people did. So if so, who leaked it? How'd he get it? Uh, live chat's so funny. Um, what are they talking about? That lawyer? Well, nobody's actually giving me her name, but somebody just said it's a dikey McMuff face. I, I think... <laughs> I think that's correct. If I saw it, uh, I saw yeah, it. Dikey really. McMuffface, JD. <laughs> Esquire. Esquire. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Constantine's commentary. Obama's admin stages a coup in and all of a sudden uh, Biden's, Biden's son, can I read? Gets a job at the Ukrainian company. Trump asked new president to investigate, yet he's the villain here. Also, Zelensky barely speaks English. Well, that's very cool. Oh, yeah. our favorite benefactress is, is back, BB. She Ooh. just says, hi, guys. And you should play the Bernie Sounder. Uh, I, of course. I am not going to be niggardly. <laughs> Thanks, BB. Truculent Phillips. Rare occasion I get to catch you guys live. Keep up the good work. We are keeping up the okay work. It's and thanks for tuning in pretty good work. Thanks for tuning in. Voxazi. This is off topic. But is, it, but is it me or does Tim Pool quick to prize lefties that make the smallest effort? He must have meant praise. Uh, make the smallest effort to push back against the most extreme parts of their party. I don't hate Tim. I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, he does that. Just like every time... I don't agree with Kavanaugh about anything, and I really don't like him, and blah, 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 but I don't think he would. That said, I think I'm probably more on that side. I don't know about specific commentary that you're referring to, but I I want to praise good behavior and good values. I don't want to be... I'm not saying there's no place for vengeance, because <laughs> it can be enjoyable, but generally... The thing I, one of the things I despise the most about the left is, is there's no path to redemption. It doesn't matter how many good things you do. If you do one bad thing, when people do good stuff, I still want them to be praised. Cause I think that's I'm not saying effective. there's no path for redemption, Yeah. but like, you know, haven't you kind of learned to treat these people how they would treat you? Uh, yeah, but the, the, I'm not saying that's without any merit, but that does take an assignment of malice too. like, you have to assign malice to that person. And that's the other thing I hate about the way they operate is they constantly assign malice. They constantly assign motive where yeah, it's and not most of them have merited. malicious intent. I'm not saying none of them do. I'm certainly not going to take that position, but the point is Ugh. I want a world in which we reward people for good behavior and in which we, uh, yeah, we have criticism for bad. But but the other side of that coin is encouraging good behavior and, and saying good job when people do it. Ugh, your reasonableness bores me. <laughs> Exhaust me. Eric Holmes. What, what incentive do they have to do the right thing then if, if they're just going to I'll stop them? harassing them uh, uh, when they so do. That's, that's... That sounds familiar. We'll stop yeah. harassing Carson King too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Eric Holmes, I used to avoid listening to the news because it was depressing. But last February, my best friend showed me your channel. 
Ooh. I've been watching on here and listening on the podcast. Love the sanity safe space. Thank well, you, thanks. Eric. And thank and thank your thank friend, you. by the way. Everybody who's friend. making these referral uh, statements, um, seriously, in today's context, huge thank you for that. We're never going to get a single referral from Susan WikiWiki. It no. comes down to sharing it with your family, sharing it with your friends. They might think you're a weirdo if you refer them to this show, but occasionally they stick around and we're very grateful for that. It's true. And now we have two black audience members. That's it's very diverse. Yes. <laughs> Blunderware. <laughs> By the way, when Modern Warfare comes out, all you slayers add me out there. Lunderware, make sure you add the hyphen at the end because I'm on PS4. Was, were those words? Did I say that any sound, of that right? That sounds right. You know, that's another aspect of the community angle I hadn't thought of. We could get like, uh, if people are playing common games like that, perhaps we could use the community page on my website to um, to facilitate some gaming connections. Because I could use I could use some people to play with. All my friends suck. I don't want to play with them. Hmm. So it sounds like a plan. Uh, Beaner8127. Matt, play <laughs> Gears. Amazing. The most red-pilled game I've played this generation. Is Mistrust of government, importance of family, and bearing arms, etc. You guys have the best podcast out now. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, I've never been a big Gears guy just because it's not really the mechanics of the game that I enjoy, and something about the aesthetics are kind of off-putting to me, too. But I'm skeptical of Gears 5 because they put a chick on the cover. It looks like another social justice uh, gesture to me, but maybe I'm mistaken in that. I, I, I don't know. This game used to be like big meatheads uh, fighting in a future war with chainsaws on guns. You know, real guy shit. And then Gears 5 comes out and they put like some short haircut chick as the protag ah. protagonist. So that's why I haven't played it, but maybe I mean, it's, it certainly could be good. Maybe I should check it out. Did you hear that Tim Pool's looking for wifey? Really? I saw JF streaming about it earlier. Does anybody know? For the some reason, I thought he was. Uh, I, thought, I thought he was taken. Maybe not. Oh, I don't know. Somebody give me the specifics of this. When did he say this on his show? Now, so he should make it a series on his channel. You know, make it like a reality show type thing. Do we have anybody for him? I don't know any single uh, women. The, listen, we wouldn't have uh, if they were easy to come by. We wouldn't have a lot of the calls on the call-in show that we do. And I don't say True. that dismissively. I say that with a full understanding of the struggle. So, uh, oh, he you know, just keep... said today. Interesting. Oh. He wants a, a a homemaker. I'll keep wow, my eye what out. What a sexist! No, good for him. What a misogynist. Um, John Martin. It seems that the left just doesn't believe that Americans would ever respond to an authoritarian takeover with their Second Amendment rights. Part of me fears this, and part of me says, "Bring it on." I hear that, you. That I is understand. why it's there. A self defense in every context, whether it's from the guy burglar burglarizing your home or from a tyrannical government violating your rights. Yeah. I hope we don't have to see it happen, but that is why it's there. Um, Nate Early. Hey, guys, what are your thoughts on theories that Dems are pushing for impeachment because they know they can't win 2020 without it? And if true, mm. why do they keep pushing their unwinnable ideas so hard? I addressed this earlier in the show. I think it's because they're trying to gather more power for 2024. Uh, they seem to be on a path to destruction. I mean, Biden, come on. <laughs> Even Elizabeth Warren doesn't have what it takes. Just bring in Michelle Obama on you know February first or right before the Iowa caucus. She can win. No one's gonna vote for her and her man arms. She it's could not swoop happen. in a minute before the ballots are cast and she will win. Hundred percent guaranteed. That is insane. You don't think she beats Joe Biden easily? Easily. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I'm talking about the general election though. I would never. Happen. Oh, I don't. I wouldn't be confident about beating Trump. I'm confident about beating this Democratic field for the nomination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be really easy. Yeah. I'm yeah. With you there. Hassan Chop, I can't wait for the 2020 election. Hope the Dems keep up every aspect of their current strategy. Eric K. Kenneth P. Vogel, the New York Times, said Ukraine was unaware of aid hold until one month after the phone call between Trump and President of Ukraine. Yeah. How can it be used as leverage if the target was unaware? Yeah, it's like, does anybody care if it's a cover-up if there was no crime? It's the same logic. Um, Shauna Thornton, the thing that got me pulled to the right got me pulled. I'm good mm. at reading context clues yeah. to see what people actually meant. Sure. Was his being claimed as property by a straight white male. This has too many words that don't make sense, Shauna. The thing that got me pulled to the right was his being claimed as property. Was my being claimed as yeah, property? Yeah, maybe she was family? claimed as we know Shauna Thornton is Shauna Thornton, right? Yeah. She's she's pretty hip to your particular perspective on uh what women being property? Feminist issues. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I, yeah, maybe she had a guy who came in and uh, treated her the right way. 
Yeah. <laughs> as a possession, as women were meant to be treated, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, doesn't matter. Hey, Tardos. Thank you. Matt, I'm gagging that your twins won and my Native Americans don't get the playoffs. Good luck. You're <laughs> going to need it. Blonde, great video, but don't be like Tool and become an exclusive content provider. I don't know what that means. Is hmm. it because they released Fear Inoculum on streaming? Are you talking about how I post my videos on YouTube? They're also on BitChute, man. Come or on. maybe that they're like the albums, they're released one every 13 years. Something like oh. that. <laughs> That must be what he's talking about. I'm glad that he used the appropriate term for the Cleveland baseball team. I would not want to be insensitive and use the I word on this stream. Uh, what? I don't know what you're talking about. No, the Twins won the division for the first time since 2010. I wish uh, I wish I could go to a game, but uh, I don't think I'll have such luxury. Anyway, it's cool. I enjoy playoff baseball, and I haven't been able to watch my team in it for a long time, so that'll be fun. Uh, Kevin Barber, this is a lot like the Kavanaugh complaints. A Dem witness says he assaulted, pressured the Ukrainian president who says he was not assaulted or pressured, but yeah. they say he was too drunk to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Have him consult with uh, Deborah Katz and the Katz firm. He'll get his story straight. I'm, so, I'm unsubscribing. Says, Blonde, do you realize that you sold your DNA to Susan uh, Wiki Wiki's sister? She's a CEO of 23andMe. Is that true? And her mom is the vice chair of Creative Commons, and she was married to Google's founder. Yeah, I knew that after the fact and immediately regretted it, but it's already done, so nothing I can do about it. Hmm. Um, you want to... My throat hurts. Will you pick up some of these? Uh, yeah. Actually, let me hop over to... Can you rem remember where you left off, and I'm going to hop over to Streamlabs real quick? Yep. Let's see. Uh... Phil says, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, Metal Man says, hey, guys, can't catch the show tonight, so I'm just here to drop off my shekels and ask, do you guys have any plans on how you will rally followers when the boogaloo, when the boogaloo pops off? Okay, by ham radio, maybe? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I guess I would hope that my website, bare minimum, would always be uh, up there, provided that, like, the grid is still online. Mm. But if we're at a place where there's no power or internet, Ah, uh, we have bigger problems, I think. So then you yeah, gotta you gotta organize locally in such mm -hmm. a circumstance. Redicus says uh, people have hung for lying on the level of Schiff and the Obama flunky. These people have no shame in the Obama administration. Had Trump surveilled for months before the election with little more than hearsay, but Trump can't look into Biden's son. Uh, yeah, and Trump got in trouble for that this week when he said we used to deal with these people in a different way. Referring to the treasonous and execution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't argue with uh, with your central point. John says, uh, I have a feeling the House is going to change hands really soon. They might. And Nancy Pelosi said, well, if we actually get ourselves out of power because of this stunt, it doesn't matter because of, you know, pursuit of higher truth and all that. And they, they do. They are playing a risky game here. And I, I think they will pay a political price for sure. Uh Phil says tactics are not objectives. Winning is the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter uh, what your principles are when you lose. Well, I just can't, I can't get fully on board with the idea that the, that the means or that the, uh, the ends justify the means. I think the means are crucial in terms of keeping peace between people of differing perspective. And if you grant that there are going to be differing perspectives in a functioning society, you have to protect the means yeah. unless everybody's going to agree a hundred percent, which I do agree that cohesion matters. You have to have some base level commonality, base level values for a society to function. But if we just say that certain opinions or certain ways of life or this or that are off the table and any means of destroying them are acceptable in pursuit of the ends, it's a recipe for a lot of conflict. And I, I can't get on board with that, uh, with that particular philosophy, though admittedly, these people test my patients every day. So just check back and maybe check back in, two in weeks years time are instead of meetups, it'll just be right wing death. Score. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I have to reload on. Uh... Oh, I can t pick it back up. If you want. Okay. Go for, go for it. Ivan Zamago wanted to clarify about Crowder and Ben, <clears throat> not in person, but their videos are directed to fans and not opposition. Crowder also likes to deflect to being oh, comedian. I, I do like change my mind though. Uh, I can I can see what you're saying. Um, they, they're very they're both very successful in their particular styles, and I admire them both. So to to be mentioned, I do. I know you're going to be mad. At, I do to be mentioned with both of them. I'm not mad at you. It's just like 
after every week you're like, I can't listen to Ben Shapiro anymore. And then the following <laughs> week you just like get on the channel and lick his butthole. It's like, it's why? True. I'm when are you going to throw in the towel gonna, with ben, for Ben Shapiro? It's like I'm you're in an abusive relationship with him. I'm not, I'm not going to. You're Michelle Fields and he's Corey Lewis. Okay. Ta- okay. Stop right there. Take that back. <laughs> I will, How, I will um, not. Where's you get credit for that one. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, BB. <laughs> we all have that guy. They knew with the crazy girlfriend who controlled by her wild, jealous nonsense, who controls him by her wild, jealous nonsense. Hopefully the Dems figure out that she just won't put out anymore after losing in 2020. YouTube. Huh. At this time. Yeah. Um, Greta, this is Dakota Stanton. Greta, I don't like sand. It's coarse and gets everywhere. Uh, I, I, that one's over my head. Me too. Um, Unfortunately, I'm sure Kevin it's probably a good job. Flanagan. <laughs> white nationalists stand with tunberg one people one empire one autist hey, hail tunberg hail our people hail victory. i would give anything to hear richard spencer say that <laughs> phil cheesesteaks i a liberal think climate change is super dire and serious but eco-socialists like greta are not serious about fixing the problem because they reject the use of nuclear power not acceptable i'm with you on half that carly fletcher you all need to listen to the Trayvon hoax interview or watch the documentary. It shows mm. how Trayvon Martin prosecutors put forward a false witness in the case. Go to tomwoods.com to access bowl. Thank you. Well, that's Doesn't another, matter. I don't know the specifics of, of the prosecution, but that is another example where just outright media lies contrary to the facts tended to stick. You still hear, I watch clips of those Portland Antifa protesters saying hands up. Don't shoot to this day. Yeah. Five years after the fact. Yep. It, it, it is an example of how tactics like shifts can be effective, unfortunately. Doesn't matter, says, is there anything more outrageous than fake outrage? <laughs> a semper ad meli or yeah. outrage as a currency. Well put, Matt. Also, might be a good idea for a cryptocurrency outrage coin. I like it. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could start that one. That'd be Yeah, fun. really. Yeah, uh, stock Zoom is gadget. way high right now. Outrage <laughs> is at a premium. Point. Zoom gadget. Trump has a 13 year old son with autism. Trump should use him in the 2020 election. Then no one is allowed to go against yeah. Trump. Is have he him, I have no idea, but let's say that he has some condition. Have him give the state of the union. I support yeah, really. this. Oh, it was a star Wars reference. Uh, which the one we didn't now. I can't remember what it was earlier. <laughs> I hate sand. It's coarse and gets everywhere. Oh yeah. 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 Isn't that a reference to, uh, to Ray in some context or something oh, like that? No, I famously am a Trekker. I mean, yeah, I don't like, not I'm not into star Wars, not a Trekkie. Hmm. Uh, Jay says, Michael, <laughs> Michael mystery meat. Knowles. <gasps> uh, Jay Why Val is he mystery meat. I don't know. Yeah, all right. Uh, Javel 90, the best way to deal with children is uh, to not take them seriously, talk past them, always refer to their parents, etc. Also, age of consent is not a good metric of adulthood. If that's not a good metric of adulthood, um, then we need to raise, raise the age of consent. Hmm. I, I'm open to an alternative. I just can't think of anything that's better necessarily. Yeah. So that's why I have to defer to it. Um. Leon is refer- at work. I'll catch everything when I'm off for some reason. When I watch you at work, I get nothing done. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Mm. Um, Kevin Flanagan in. is anyone else less worried about when chicks start talking about politics and more about why they're talking about them outside of the kitchen? <laughs> it's good. That's good true. question. I'm in my kitchen right now. I, I yeah. only film in my kitchen. Um, Doug Blask says Tunberg is Swedish for human shield. <laughs> I, I would believe it at this point. Yeah. Um, mandatory carry says, happy birthday, blonde. You still scare me. I'm at work. Rescue me. Send pizza. All gun control is racing. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Downskated said, I think blonde maybe should take her final form An inquisitor. Karen cut your hair into the Karen haircut and begin a crusade in the name of our God emperor, building the catapults and banishing the, <laughs> the heretical PS. Happy B day. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Hider Jeffrey a, I was at the theater that night and they can duck off. Wow. Don't give that monster the power of taking that away from us. Wow. That's a, Sorry that's if pretty true. incredible. If you, if you have any thoughts on what that was like, or if you, uh, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear it. Send me an email. If, if you have, uh, if there's something to share about what that experience was like, I'd, I'd like to hear it. Um, Mo power to ya. Um, the night of the Aurora shooting a guy I was friends with who had the same name as the shooter was on the other side of Denver, watching the midnight showing of dark. Wow. Night Rise. Whoa. 
Did he? Uh, he I wonder if he had any. If he got in trouble or anything. Like if he was mistaken. Maybe. That's weird, though. If I mean, if you live in that area and your name is James Holmes, you might have to change your name or move. I would think. It's got to be a common name, though. Yeah. Um, the human shrug. If I get killed in a mass shooting, it's because I ran out of ammo. Uh, evil black yeah. cat. Joker hysteria is morbid, self-fulfilling prophecy. They're pre-stacking a reward in media coverage for the psycho that shoots up a theater. That's true. We didn't even entertain that. Uh, yeah. It comes from the I told you so gun controls. They're, by these dairy tactics, they're increasing the probability that they... I, I think some of that could be true. I mean, the, I... I, I somewhat subscribe to the theory that momentary fame is a, at least a partial motive for a lot of these guys. And so the more you build it up in the way that they're describing, I think the more incentive there is there. I think I think that could be the case. Ooh, sorry. Um, I feel like garbage. Um, I bought PN. When watching the Greta video, am I the only one that thinks the climate catastrophe can't come fast enough? No, just me. <laughs> feel better, Blonde. Thank we you. We had a good run. I wouldn't. I won't be that mad if this is it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, really. Yama Fago. I don't care what Blonde says. The hoax hate sounder is epic, and I look forward to it every week. <laughs> Keep those backwards swaths that's coming. We appreciate it. Well, thanks, man. It's uh, it's too much of a staple of the show to get rid of. The the Pink Panther copyright holders will never win. Can't let them. Um. Okay, Kevin. Uh, to be fair, getting a vibrant future engineer as a lawyer makes sense. You know, he spent a lot of time in the courtroom, in that courtroom. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. What are you Stellar saying? J what are you saying, Kevin? Uh, Stellar J. Atkins, was that a lawyer or a pimp? I'm confused. Yeah. I already made that joke. I was there first. Stellar. <laughs> or did you so steal it from the chat? No. Uh, women was, can be funny. And by true, women, I funny. mean only me. Uh, the least in the kingdom says it's not libel or slander if it's true. No case listed to the trending insurrection, listed to the trending insurrection or anch on Anchor FM. I can't read. We're talking Illiterate. about the radio guy. I guess so. Yeah, um, I, I can't. I don't know how a name could be libel or slander because there's no truth or falsehood to it. It's just an insult. It's like calling someone a stupid poo poo head. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't actually it's have poop stupid, on my face. Poo -poo. Well, it's Shut just up. an insult, man. Like, it's not true or false. Yeah, Caesar, I see you. Um, Kevin Flanagan. Well, Tonto, I wouldn't normally agree to commit a hate crime, but since it's your birthday. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. Jim Wright says, De Bears. David says, this $10 yeah, was is for rough, watching JF Blonde. Good on you, and thanks to both of you for the sanity safe space. You're welcome. I, Kevin, I can't. Uh, slasher, I'm Canadian. Can I come down for Civil War II? <laughs> Electric <laughs> Jigaboo. <laughs> <laughs> Electric Jigaboo. That's it. Is it, it's the Jigaboo Boogaloo. The Jigaboo yeah. Boogaloo. Uh, Galandro Glade. Tim commented on how thirty plus professional women are upset they can't find men of equal status, and he was talking about his preferences as a comparison. Ah. See more concerned. Ninety percent of millennial females support communism. That's a big concern. Hmm. Um, oh, and that provides context. Uh, truculent Phillips. Ten wasn't enough. Here are some more shekels. Have a good night, guys. Well, thanks. Hope to watch you Wednesday. Let me reload this real quick. Last one is from Robin. Big dong Mike Obama will never be president. <laughs> she would have to conduct uh, a diplomatic relations from the White House kitchen. That's another glorious uh, conspiracy rabbit hole is the, the, the true gender of Michelle Obama. <laughs> All I yeah. can say is if people haven't seen... I'm mostly kidding, but two things you should look she at. She has a bigger penis than Justin Trudeau's fake penis. One, one is the dancing on Ellen. And two is the multiple occasions in which Barack Obama referred to Michelle as Michael. Multiple times. Yeah. It, draw your own conclusions. It's just every, it, it's viewing everyone. Draw your should, own conclusions. Should see. All right. Uh, Redicus says, someone needs to get that asshole some pearls to clutch with his false outrage. I would have told him to find his uh, to find his fainting couch and come back when he wasn't hysterical. Someone needs to put these charlatans in their place. I agree. Uh, Chicken Fried Monkey says, Hey, Blonde, I love that lipstick. What's the brand and shade? Oh, I actually don't know. Normally huh. I use like a MAC lip tint, but my lips are chapped because I think I'm just like red and chapped and gross because <laughs> it's, I'm, it's of my illness. illness. Yeah. Yeah. Natural il illness pigment. Uh, <laughs> and she also says, Matt, what firearm would you recommend for my mother as a beginner? It would be for home defense. She just has her stupid set of sliding glass doors installed and she, uh, or, and they terrify me for her safety. Well, most of uh, this, there are some objectives in terms of, I mean, you're probably not going to get her a rifle or something like that. But uh, 
so much of firearm preference, there's subjectivity to. A lot of it is just what feels good to you and what you happen to shoot well. Because ultimately, if it's a defense situation, what matters more than anything is your ability to land a shot properly. So I would say if you have a range in your area, if you can just go rent a few and maybe maybe you consider a shotgun for a home defense situation, pull a Joe Biden, buy a shotgun, buy a shotgun. Maybe you want a handgun, but go get some experience with a few different options first and decide what you like and what you shoot the best and then buy. I made the yeah. mistake of, you know, buying something that I thought, you know, looked cool. I, I, and I did something that I didn't buy for purely practical purposes and for what I shoot well for defense purposes. And I ended up having to buy it twice. And, you know, but the great thing about buying guns is if you buy the wrong gun, the benefit is you just have another gun. That's, That's it's true. not a big problem. You just have another, gun. but yeah, go to, a, go to a place and rent some stuff and, um, and decide based on what you shoot well and what you like the feel of. Quebec says, I'm not sure if you remember, but there was, uh, but I was the one who sent the super chat quoting the 14 words. Never forget. What kind of world do we live in that you can't secure the existence of your kids? I was trying to help Matt get his hit piece. I remember it was, it was up there with when I called Jack Conti a white N word. Uh, in December or January, which is you also, also used up. chink conversationally once. I referred to chink Uger. It was not. <laughs> it was not racist. <laughs> Me too says if you if you're interested in better conversations of those who disagree, I suggest uh, Dr. Bogosian's new book, How to Have Impossible Conversations. Well, I'm not familiar with the book, but I do like uh, I do like him generally. I've heard him speak. He was the guy who did who led the false gender studies uh, thing at Portland state. Remember oh, yeah. that where they made those Peter Bogosian. Yeah. They made those silly papers about how uh, dog park gosh, rape even, dog park. Yeah. Dog. And park then they translated the Mein Kampf and it right. issued it as some kind of feminist thing. I think he got in trouble at Portland state too. I believe, I believe that's how that ended. Can McNeely says I would rather face mass extinction than live under Greta's the Greta's of this world. Also hope you feel better soon. Blonde. Oh, uh, I, I agree. And thanks. Renicus says, I couldn't resist if I, if I had a million dollar, if I had a million dollar, we going to be rich. <laughs> John says the Aurora shooter would have had a record if the psychologist he was seeing had reported him to the police officer, not campus security. Also could have been prevented if she did her job and had him placed at a 72 hour hold. She should have been charged. I don't know enough about the fact pattern of that case. So if that's true, I'll have to take a look. He's real crazy. I know that much. Seems like it. Yeah. I know he successfully pleaded innocent by reason of insanity. Did he not? Mm, Wasn't that how that case know. was resolved or not, not guilty sure. by, by reason of insanity? I think I can't recall. Uh, Aka Zit says a case that might demoralize you, but give blonde an excuse to shit on Philly D even more <laughs> is the rape accusation case of Brock Turner and Chanel Miller, who just came out to cash in with her book. It's how Kavanaugh's case would have gone without the outrage. I don't know that much about the Brock Turner case. This is the case at Stanford where the guy like fingered a chick at, at, by a dumpster mm -hmm. and then he only got, what, three months in jail or something. And there was outrage that it was insufficient. I don't know enough yeah. about, and of course the judge got recalled too. But I don't know enough about what the appropriate, what the sentencing guidelines said, what the facts of the case were. I know everyone was really pissed off about that case but these days i feel like i have to review everything with a very with a highly scrutinizing eye because you never know that's the stand that's the that's the uh, result of the kavanaugh standard yeah. you never know what is legitimate and what is absolute bullshit and i'm not saying anything about the the brock turner case to be clear because i just don't know but my point is when i hear rape accusation these days i am highly highly skeptical because this is the world that they've created mm -hmm. which is Certainly a bad thing in certain contexts. You should always be skeptical and demand facts, but they've... Anyway, I'm just going to get myself into trouble if I keep speaking. So that's, that's all we got. Uh, I want to say thank you to our top contributors over on DLive. Uh, Darth Jones, Paul Dog, and Wugly. Thank you guys for supporting the show. Anything else before we call it, uh, before we wrap it up here? No, I'm tired. Well, I'm All right. Well, you have to uh, you certainly have to get better. So eat some chicken soup and um, and drink some orange juice after you cook for your husband, of course. Get your wifely duty out of the way. I will. Thanks, as always, for hanging out with us live tonight, guys, keeping us in touch with the facts and making fun of um, Greta Thunberg and being moral degenerates who should apologize on national airwaves. Never. Appreciate you guys. If you're listening on YouTube or on an audio platform later or DLive, of course, too. Thank you kindly as well for supporting the show. Remember, 
there is more material, including the call-in show and other stuff you might not find on YouTube on the audio platforms. You can check those out on the website. That's mattchristensenmedia.com slash podcast. We've got Apple, Google, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can find us. You can also email us. That's beauty on the beta at gmail.com. We'll be back next Sunday, because if it's Sunday, sorry, Chuck Todd, it's not Meet the Press. It's Beauty and the Beta. See you then. Bye, guys.